Ursula base in the court of Fontaine and have a rest. Navia said something about having a place ready for us there, didn't she? Come on, let's go! the Spina di Rosula. Seems they sent me the right way. Hey, what do you mean by chatty? Paimon's always careful not to talk too much. Most of the time, anyway. It's an honor to meet you both. I was sent from the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nourilette wishes to see you. It seems he has something important to discuss in person. Nourilette? He wants to see us again already? Huh. We talked so much the last time we met. Has something happened? I am not privy to the details. It would be best if you came to the Palais Marmonia and asked Monsieur Norvillette in person. Mm, if you say so, but... Hyman has a bad feeling about this. <sighs> now that I've delivered the message, I'll take my leave. Thanks! We haven't left the room for a few days, so we'll head over once we've freshened up a bit.
standing there. You daydreaming or thinking something over? Yes, I did send someone to fetch you. But as for what I'd like to discuss next... Well, I still have some reservations. Given that we've already made the trip here, you should just tell us. Bet you need us to help you with something, right? I do indeed have something I'd like to ask you to do. However, you should wait until after I tell you the details, then decide for yourselves whether you'd like to help or not. The situation is this. It has come to my attention that the Snezhnayan harbinger known as the Knave wants a diplomatic meeting with you, correct? I heard that she was originally from Fontaine, but for her to suddenly arrive here and abruptly request such a meeting like this, I sincerely advise you to refuse her invitation outright. Hmm. I'm sure you're aware that her purpose is most likely related to Child's recent predicament. We convicted one of the Snezhnayan Harbingers in a court of law, but we have yet to provide any form of detailed report on the matter. This does indeed provide an opportunity for Snezhnaya to put pressure on us. I believe we should adopt an evasive stance until we can provide a proper explanation and have a preliminary plan on how to deal with the matter. No, we shouldn't. I think we should agree to the meeting. Oh? Well, you see, we are the ones that owe an explanation. If we keep putting off the meeting, it could easily result in the problem escalating, right? It's like... like a fight between two friends. If they don't agree to see each other and talk in person, isn't it possible that the friendship could end entirely? Though diplomatic relations between Fontaine and Snezhnaya could be considered as friendly, it is only superficially so. You wouldn't go so far as to say that our nations are friends, as you did in your example. It was just an analogy. An analogy, okay? Moreover, even if we were to talk in person, if we don't have sufficient information prepared, it is quite possible the result wouldn't be restored relations, but a complete falling out. Hmm, I don't think we should overthink those possibilities yet. <clears throat> Even if the logic of the Divine is not immediately apparent, its wisdom will only be revealed with time. Besides, you'll be at the meeting. If any problems do pop up, you'll have no problem navigating them. I must clarify that interacting and communicating with people outside of court is not my cup of tea. It seems you think too much of me. But more importantly, when did I agree to join the meeting with you? Uh, <laughs> you mean you won't come? No, 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 that, that won't do. I can't go to the meeting alone. You have to accompany me. I must take you with me. Lady Farina, could there be something else regarding this matter that is being kept from me? No, not at all. Look, I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine, Fosalor, the god of justice who is loved and adored by many. So I only hope that justice will be served in this matter. Don't overthink it. I'll go find someone to arrange the meeting. <sighs> Though it could officially be considered a diplomatic conference, I prefer to see our meeting today as an ordinary tea party. I assume you see it the same way, Miss Farina? Hmm. Lady Farina? Uh, oh! <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Just like you said, a tea party. <laughs> I should thank you for providing the pastries. They look delectable. To make this tea party even more lively, I've invited someone else to join us today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Monsieur Nuvillette. I was born in Fontaine, so naturally, there's no need to introduce the nation's revered Udex to me. Hello. The pleasure is also mine. First, I would like to thank the two of you. 
I'm often away on business outside of Fontaine, and I'm told that the children of the House of the Hearth have been well taken care of by you. Uh... Oh, I'm not referring to when my children, Linny and Lynette, were falsely accused by you. Please don't misunderstand. The children of the House of the Hearth are often misunderstood, perhaps due to the reputation of the Fatui. There's no getting around that. All I meant to say is that Fontaine has been stable in recent years. The people are well off and the children lead happy, fulfilled lives. That is something truly worth cherishing, and no one wishes to disrupt such peace. Now then, you have come regarding the matter of child, correct? Well, yes. It appears the ever-busy Udex Nouvellet doesn't wish to waste time with diplomatic pleasantries, and hopes that we can get straight to the point of our talk. Yes, as you surmised, understanding child's situation is indeed one of the goals of this trip. As we are both diplomats from Smejnaya, as well as Fatui Harbingers, Child and I have always been colleagues. Were anything to happen in Fontaine, each of us would serve as the other's attorney to resolve the issue. So now, in my capacity as his attorney, I request that Child be turned over to Snezhnaya. We have a responsibility to cooperate with Fontaine and resolve what has happened to him together. The rules governing attorneys only apply before a trial has concluded. Since a verdict has already been rendered, we see the case as settled. I apologize for being unable to grant your request. An outright refusal. Very well. I respect all the rules of Fontaine's courts, just as I respect you as Chief Justice. Okay, why don't we back up a step? You don't need to transfer Child to us. I only request to enter the Fortress of Meripede to see Child and confirm his condition. It's not like you couldn't even manage to fulfill a simple request like that. Right, Miss Farina? Uh, um, about that. The Fortress of Meripede has always been completely autonomous. Even we have no authority to interfere there, and diplomatic issues do not suffice as an excuse. However, if you absolutely must confirm the situation of the Harbinger, I have a proposal. The knave showed up already? Well, Linny did say that Father will be returning soon. We didn't even know that Linny was from the House of the Hearth at the time, so we kind of overlooked that information. Yes, thank you for your kind advice. I'm well aware of the situation. I also notice that Lady Farina acts a little odd and unnatural whenever I bring up matters related to the Knave. Could the Knave be... threatening Lady Farina or something? If that were the case, then why wouldn't Lady Farina inform me? And what means could the Knave possibly have to twist the arm of an Archon? Likely. Even though Farina can act a little weird at times, she's still an Archon. In reality, this problem is even more thorny than it appears. According to reports from the Fortress of Meripede, Child recently disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The details are still unclear. We cannot rule out an escape, but there have also been no reports of him outside of the Fortress of Meripede. Special guards oversee the fortress, and its internal systems are extensive. Combined with the special characteristics of the surrounding terrain, an escape should not be possible. I suspect that there's something else behind Child's disappearance. I was only willing to share this information with you because you are friends of Child, and it is my duty to see justice done. So this is what you wanted to see us about before? Yes. I would like you to go to the Fortress of Meripede and investigate Child's disappearance. This was my proposal during our meeting with the Knave. 
Rather than allowing her to intervene, I offered to send someone to find out about Child's situation and report back to her in detail. The knave did not seem satisfied by my proposal, but she still agreed to go along with it for the time being. Her words were, We will talk more once we have that report. So that means we bought ourselves some time! Firstly, you're already acquainted with Child. Your eyes may discern relevant details there that others would miss. And secondly, is the consideration of the unique nature of the Fortress of Meripede. Isn't it just Fontaine's prison? I would not define it so crudely. The Fortress of Meripede is not affiliated with the court system of Fontaine on paper. It has always existed as an autonomous entity. Early in Fontaine's history, criminals were punished with exile, not imprisonment. Even today, sentences against convicted criminals still include exile, just as before. The Fortress of Meripede may seem like a prison, but it should in fact be regarded as a gathering place for exiles. All we do is dispatch guards to keep watch and help maintain security, but we have no right to get involved with any other matters. Although I do have a personal relationship with the Administrator there, neither myself nor the courts have the right to be directly involved with the investigation, no matter how serious the grounds. Oh! Paimon gets it now! That's why you need us to conduct our own investigation as a third party, right? Correct. I will arrange false charges against you so that you may secretly investigate inside the fortress during your detention. This will save us a lot of unnecessary trouble. So, are you two willing to accept my proposal? Yeah, no matter how you look at it, it seems we're the best choice. Alright, we hereby accept this difficult task. Uh, reluctantly. You two have my sincere thanks. This matter is of critical importance to Fontaine's current situation. Also, I hope that both of you can keep this operation a secret. We will rendezvous at the Fortress of Meripede's entrance on Erinaeus once you've prepared yourselves. I will arrange for someone to take you inside. Prepared ourselves? Uh, is there something we need to prepare? Perhaps you could enjoy a good meal and have a nice bath. I'm afraid that living conditions inside the fortress are nothing like those on the outside world. Oh, right! Even though we'll be there on trumped-up charges, we'll be in prison for real. Uh... On second thought, is it too late to back out? Please do not worry. Since you are sacrificing both your time and quality of life for the sake of delivering this report, you will be compensated according to the highest standards permitted to legal staff, regardless of the outcome. Now that's more like it! Come on, Traveler! Let's go eat the best meal we can find! We'll eat so much that we won't need to eat another meal for a whole month! Your treat! Are you leaving now? In that case, please take this cake as a token of my personal gratitude. Oh, no need to thank me for it. Just be sure to enjoy it. Now that Paimon
Emma thinks about it, we've always been super careful ever since we arrived in Fontaine. Just to avoid breaking any strange laws here. But here we are, about to willingly send ourselves off to the Fortress of Meropede. Hmm, maybe this is what they call fate. <sighs> Let's just try our best to investigate everything quickly once we get there. Paimon doesn't want to stay in prison too long. Oh, what is that I hear? Is it the taste of a breaking story? Hey! You can't hear a taste! And what are you doing here, Charlotte? Oh, don't remind me. I invited an eyewitness to a case to eat here, and I was planning to get some great material out of him. But he didn't even show up! Ah, calm down, calm down. This is nothing new. As a journalist, you should be used to this by now. As long as you can score some juicy tidbits from the Traveler, you might still be able to recover the cost of the meal. Uh, you know we can still hear you, Charlotte. <laughs> uh, never mind, it's nothing. I just heard you mention the Fortress of Meripede. You didn't commit a crime, did you? Please tell me all about it. No way! We would never! We're just going there to... Oh no, Paimon almost forgot that Nevelette told us to keep it a secret! Huh? You're being arrested for that? Oh, but now that I think about it, I suppose that's not completely unreasonable. That's pretty despicable, almost as offensive as committing theft. Oh, you mean Paimon really did something that serious? Sorry, Paimon really messed up. Uh, in that case, it's nothing particularly newsworthy after all. Oh, how disappointing. All oh, right, there's still a chance. Uh, since you're going to be at the Fortress of Meripede, would you be willing to help me gather some material for a story? Um, about that, uh, Paimon doesn't think we'll have any time. It's nothing difficult. All you have to do is think of a way to get some time face to face with the Warden of the Fortress. He was awarded the honorary title of Duke in Fontaine. Sounds really cool, huh? Only those who have made significant contributions to the nation have been conferred this title. It's incredibly rare. On top of that, the Fortress of Meripede has never been under the jurisdiction of the courts. Practically nobody, including journalists like me, knows anything about the person in charge there. Oh, if I could write an exclusive article about him, I bet it would sell a boatload of papers! You make it sound easy, but it really depends! Of course! I wouldn't ask you to do it for free, so this meal is on me! Alright, you got a deal! We'll do anything you want! <laughs> then it's settled! The food should be here any second, right? Huh? Wait, just how much did you order? Come, just as promised. 
Yes, this is the one and only entrance to the fortress of Meripede from Erinaeus. Careful, you may want to step back a bit. Oh, so you have to go down from here? Is the prison underwater? Utilizing both the barrier of the water as well as the fear humans have of the depths, the fortress of Meripede is naturally the perfect place to confine and guard criminals. But do not worry, it is not nearly as frightening inside as you may think. You will see for yourselves once you are down there. Uh, Paimon hopes you're right. Don't know about you, but just thinking about being at the bottom of the sea like that gives Paimon the heebie-jeebies. Oh, and there's one more thing. I mentioned that I have had personal dealings with the administrator of the fortress, Rithesley. He's a very shrewd fellow. Yeah, we heard about him too. He's that Duke, right? Correct. He is the highest ranking manager of the underwater prison. Even though you are going there to investigate at my behest, it would behoove you to avoid any confrontation with him or any of his subordinates. The Duke rarely ever leaves the Fortress of Meripede, but that does not mean he is not privy to all that is happening inside and outside the fortress. He is quiet, but not unaware, so please bear that in mind. All right. It's about all the time that we have to talk privately. I'm counting on you two. Don't worry. We won't let you down. Good. <clears throat> Madeline! I'm here, Monsieur Nervalet. These two are the newest convicts, I presume? <laughs> Don't worry. They won't escape on my watch. <laughs> like we would try. Please follow me, you two. I'll process your paperwork for entering the Fortress of Meripede. what it feels like to be a criminal in Fontaine. You two seem to be taking this pretty well. It's rare to see convicts in such a good mood. they make you make the trip down here today? Monsieur Nervalet personally requested I escort these two convicts. I suppose he was concerned others might not be up to the task. <laughs> well now, aren't you the lucky one? Must be nice to be on good terms with the big shots like the Chief Justice. The only people I get to see every day are the new inmates. Well, have you tried service with a smile? Who knows, it might help your professional reputation. <laughs> yeah, right. As if. Every criminal comes through here looking miserable. How can I smile with such a toxic work environment? And even if I did smile at them, the convicts would probably just think that I'm some freak getting some kind of twisted enjoyment from their pain. Oh, she's got a point. Well, I've finished transferring you. You two will register here, and Marette will guide you through the remaining procedures. <sighs> yep, I'll take it from here. You head on back to that bright and sunny world above. Okay, let me see. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? That would be us! Let me confirm your charges and sentence. Let's see. You two are charged with... Eating a cake specially prepared for the Archon by a Snezhnayan envoy without the Archon's permission, thereby incapacitating the political center of Fontaine for a brief period. Sentence... 45 days? Huh? L wait... You mean the cake that Nervalet gave us was... Just looking at the charges. It seems you two are capable of causing some serious trouble. 
And considering how fond Lady Furina is of sweets, this crime is tantamount to trying to assassinate the Hydro Archon herself. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> anyway, we still need to finish processing you before you can enter the Fortress of Meripede. Please stand in front of the board over there. I'll take your mug shots with my camera. Oh, all right! But be sure to catch Paimon's good side. And we're done. Thank you for your cooperation. Next, someone will be along to guide you inside the fortress. Please be sure to cherish this opportunity for rebirth. Huh? Rebirth? Isn't that a little much? We're only gonna be here for 45 days! You two are the new inmates, right? Follow me. Oh, okay! Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler! Save it. Not like I'll remember your names. Move it. the guards here? Um, is there anything we should be careful of while we're here? Uh, did Paimon already ask something she wasn't supposed to? Why should I tell you anything? What's in it for me? <sighs> this is exactly why I can't stand you fish. I wouldn't even be doing this if it weren't for the credit coupons. Credit coupons? Alright, seeing as you're not the annoying kind that's getting dragged in here crying and blubbering, I guess I can tell you a few things. But next time, it'll cost you some coupons. Mora means nothing here. Here, we use credit coupons. Coupons can get you almost anything in the Fortress of Meripede. Desires? Fulfilled. You want power? No problem. Coupons can even change fate itself. So, credit coupons are a currency that can only be used here? It's not as simple as that. Like Moret said, everyone gets a chance at rebirth. No matter how much money or power you had before, it means nothing once you set foot inside the Fortress of Meripede. You have to start over and earn your coupons. Everyone starts from the same place, and you have a chance at a new, less terrible life. I guess that's the real purpose of the coupons. They symbolize true fairness and true justice. And this is also exactly why so many criminals choose not to return to the outside world, even after they've served their sentence. Oh, so that's what the Fortress of Meripede is like. Huh. Paimon was under the impression that it'd be more like a prison. It certainly ain't all sunshine and roses here, but it's also not the worst place to be. You'd better take a good look at the scenery now. It'll be the last chance you get for a while. After being away from the sunlight for so long, even the terrifying depths of the sea start to feel like home. It just stops feeling oppressive, you know? Oh, I'm actually an inmate like you two. Welcoming newcomers is a job I've picked up to earn some extra coupons. Uh, why aren't you answering us again? I've told you enough for free. Any more info is gonna cost you. So all you care about is Mora! 
Wait, no. Coupons? Almost there. It's down through here. Your turn to give it a try. a metaphor for your previous life, isn't it? Uh, our lives weren't that bad! entrance to the fortress of Meribede? Huh. It looks like there are other new arrivals, too. Oh, they sure don't look happy. Uh, maybe we look too relaxed for fresh convicts. Oh, right. We're on someone else's territory now. Uh, we need to think of a good way to act like criminals to get by. If we're discovered, even Nervalet might not be able to rescue us. Hey! Don't scare Paimon! Oh, Paimon's not ready for all this! Uh, look, I don't really know you, and I have no idea what kind of crime you committed, but... You wouldn't have happened to anger someone important, did you? Uh, someone important? Paimon doesn't think so. Uh, wait, why are you suddenly trying to talk to us now? Now's not the time to worry about that. Anyway, it's over there, so... You just go on over there by yourselves. I've done my job, so... Good luck. What was that all about? Uh, wait a second. Are there usually so many garden racks around here? Prisoners numbers 7459 and 7560. Welcome. Oh, no need to be anxious. These Gardamechs aren't here to attack you. In fact, they're here as your honor guard. When I heard that you were friends of Monsieur Neuvelet, I had the Gardamechs come and wait in formation. Wait! You know about our connection with Neuvelet? The seafloor isn't as cut off from the world as you might imagine. However, I'm afraid that I know nothing more than that you are friends of the Udex. And, as you can see, committing a crime means being sentenced here, even if you're friends with the Chief Justice. Quite fair. The, the Duke! Uh, greetings, Your Grace! L lovely weather today, isn't it? Huh, greetings, my good fellow. Well, I'm willing to imagine that the weather is as good outside the sea as you say it is. <laughs> ah, how great it would have been if only the fortress of Meripede had been built on the coast, huh? It would have been so convenient to enjoy a nice chat in the sunshine. Ah, my profuse apologies. I just got so nervous when I saw you, I just... So this is the Duke. He sure looks a lot younger than Paimon imagined. The Traveler and Paimon, correct? Mr. Deacon here was responsible for your welcome. I trust you were satisfied with his guidance? Outstanding! Well, Deacon, I recall we discussed fate during our last work meeting, hmm? 
I believe that fate will reward all those who take every aspect of their work and life seriously. When you return to your bunk, you'll find the guards have issued some extra credit coupons to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Your Grace. Oh, and you too. I can't believe you gave me such praise. If you need anything in the future, anything, please come find me anytime. No credit coupons necessary. Well, I believe that concludes the introductions. We've already taken enough time here. Deacon, if you would. Yes, Your Grace. I'll take my leave now. Please, follow me. To make you feel more welcome, I'll show you around the various facilities of the Fortress of Meripede. I hope it'll help you adjust to life here. He's going to personally give us a cure? Huh. Hyman can't figure out what this guy's thinking at all. No wonder Charlotte's so interested in him. He's one of those mysterious types. All right, let's keep up with him. <laughs> There's no need to be so reserved. The label of criminal is nothing but one of many identities. And being criminally inclined here at the fortress is just one of many ways to survive. Uh, is it really okay for the warden to think like that? We're real criminals, you know. What if we're too difficult to handle? <laughs> well, then maybe you'll be able to carve out a name and a place for yourselves in this underwater world, hmm? But before you go in swinging, Please remember that in the Fortress of Meripede, it's better to not cause trouble for yourself or for the guards. Now, we've arrived at a very important place, the Coupon Cafeteria. You can come here and claim one welfare meal each day. Welfare meal? You mean, it doesn't cost anything? That's right. Criminals are essential to fortress operations, so we must guarantee that they at least have the basic means to survive. <laughs> But that's not how it was. Back in the day, it cost your reward coupons just to get a cup of water here. For fish like you who just arrived with nothing, you'd have to go to work hungry until you earned enough coupons to eat. It was only after His Grace became the administrator that we got the free meal rule. Now everyone gets a square meal every day, even no good slackers who've never picked up a wrench in their whole lives. Nobody starves to death here. In the Fortress of Meripede, credit coupons are the only currency, and everything must be purchased. In some sense, you could say using the coupons is a form of trade. But trade is always conducted by people. So if we want trade here to prosper, we need everyone to work hard and live their lives. If nobody could even afford a meal, then the whole fortress would be up in arms. And that would only make things more difficult for me. So. Rather than saying that we're giving everyone a free meal here, you should say that everyone's hard work has improved the living conditions in the Fortress of Meripede. Your Grace's reasoning is correct, but what I said is also true. Whatever the case, hard work is rewarded here. You'd be hard-pressed to find anywhere else as fair and reasonable. Right! Pilot sees your point. By that logic, this place doesn't seem so bad after all! Oh, wait, no. We should have dropped our guard so quickly. But it seems the inmates really respect the Duke because of his attitude, right? Hmm. We should still try to verify the truth with our own eyes. Uh, let's continue this way. This place is known as the Pancration Ring. Sometimes we have criminals who have more energy than they know what to do with. 
their daily work alone isn't enough of an outlet for them. So, instead of leaving them to their own devices, we've provided them with this dedicated venue. This way, nobody will get involved unless they want to be. Pancreation matches? And you can earn extra coupons? Oh, what do you think, Traveler? Interested? But I must warn you that your sentence will be extended if you fail to restrain yourself and end up seriously injuring or killing your opponent. So, did you set this place up too? No, actually. I just granted approval for the organizer to use this area to build the ring, and I collect a portion of the proceeds in return. Of course, the fees are also quite useful. Oh. Do you mind if we ask what they're used for? Sure. Ensuring personal safety, maintaining the arena, and resolving any conflicts that arise. Why? Are you interested in how to manage a pancreation ring? Oh, no, no. Paimo was just wondering if that's how you paid for everyone's welfare meals. A reasonable guess. I see you have a talent for entrepreneurship. Oh, you hear that? Paimon has a talent! So we can start a business here? That is something you can discuss between yourselves later. Let's move on for now. Grace, good morning. I mean, good afternoon. No, wait, what time is it again? What time indeed? Time waits for no one, so it's best to keep an eye on it. Ah, uh, my, my apologies, Your Grace. <sighs> Jeez, that guy's so nervous he almost forgot to breathe. <sighs> Sorry, forgive my manners. These are the dormitories, which is where inmates sleep. The guards will inform you where your bunk is later. In the Fortress of Meripede, criminals usually spend most of their time in either the production zone or the sleeping areas. The production zone? What does it produce? Is that where we'll be working? Not necessarily. Though working in the production zone is the most reliable way to earn credit coupons, if you have other skills, you can skip your shifts to earn them in other ways. Wow. Wait, you're the manager of this place, and you're just telling us to our faces that it's okay to skip work? The fact that the Fortress of Meripede has continued operating completely autonomously is proof enough that most people are willing to work honestly and earn a stable income. As for what we produce, many of the clockwork machines seen all over Fontaine originate from our workshop. Therefore, the Fortress of Meripede is not only a place where criminals serve their sentences, but also a giant machine factory. There's no need for me to get into specifics about the production process now. You'll experience it all firsthand when you report for work tomorrow. Let's move on. The tour continues over this way. <laughs> uh. Oh, uh, you really scared me there. I didn't expect to see you here, uh, Your Grace. <laughs> I thought maybe I was so tired from work that I was starting to see things. The only thing you should be seeing is the work in front of you. Stay focused and keep up the pace. Oh, is something the matter? Uh, <laughs> it's 
nothing. Paimon's just worried about how hard we'll have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Time like this. Oh, oh no, you didn't injure yourself, did you? Not yet, unfortunately for you. But thank you for your concern, Siege Wing. Oh. <laughs> then you must be here for those two. Allow me to introduce you. This is the infirmary, and Siege Wing here is the fortress of Meripede's head nurse. <laughs> Hello, new faces. They call me the head nurse, but I actually handle all the nurse related work all by myself down here. Since you seem to have some rare downtime with no patience, perhaps you could find the time to join us for dinner? Oh, then these two must be some important convicts. <laughs> sure, I'll join the welcome party. Thank you. Your presence will be the pièce de résistance for today's tour. Oh, so the tour part is over now? I believe I've already covered the primary aspects of life here in the fortress. As for your work, there'll be someone else to guide you through the details. Hmm. Is there anything else? I seldom conduct tours, so why don't you just ask if you have any questions? Uh, well, this is our first time here. Paimon's not sure what to ask. Then let's head back to the coupon cafeteria. Maybe a meal will help you think up some questions. You should at least try to be excited. Our free meals are actually pretty good here. What do you think of the food? Does it meet your expectations? Wow! It looks delicious! No one made it sound like living conditions in the Fortress of Meripede wasn't very good. Who would have guessed that criminals get to eat tasty food like this every day? Oh, isn't that the meal box that only super lucky people manage to draw? Seems like you two are quite fortunate. It actually has nothing to do with luck in this case. I had a word with Walsey, so you didn't have to draw lots like everyone else. Oh, you mean the meals are random? Yes, what you get to eat depends completely on your luck. You could say that it's a distasteful little game that Chef Walsey likes to play here in the cafeteria. Paimon knew it! If criminals got to eat tasty food like this every meal, the crime rate in Fontaine would skyrocket for sure! Excuse me, did I hear you mention Nervy Let just now? Oh, I've been wondering how he's doing. Is he busy with work? Has he been taking care of his health? He seems healthy no matter how you look at him. But he works so hard all the time, so it must be really tiring. Sounds like he hasn't changed a bit. Looks like you can stop worrying so much, Siege Wayne. Oh, that's good. But I still feel like it's been too long since I've heard any news about him. No news is good news. Maybe next time I've got something to discuss with him, I can invite you to accompany us. Hmm? But isn't the Fortress of Meropede independent from Fontaine's court system? What do you two 
you have to discuss? Well, we provide all kinds of mechanical products for official use, and some essential goods have to be obtained from the overworld, so we naturally have to stay in touch about this and that. Monsieur Nivellet's character is unimpeachable. No matter the question, you can discuss it openly and freely with him. Talking with him feels quite effortless. In light of that, I am quite willing to go out of my way to show respect and accommodate him. In fact, right now I'm treating you two as guests invited by Monsieur Nivellet. But unfortunately, I can only do so until the end of this meal. After this, you two will just be inmates here. You're very welcome. Well, your new life awaits. Traveler and Paimon, right? Listen up. As new inmates, the only thing you need to worry about is what to do and when to do it. Don't make any extra trouble for yourself. Your bunks are right over there. Follow me. This is where we'll be sleeping from now on. Oh, Paimon can't believe this! Oh, the days of staying home and reading detective stories are like a dream now. Uh, by the way, Traveler, we saw a lot of things worth investigating just now. Even though the Duke didn't say it too directly, judging from what he said at the end, it seems that he was only welcoming because we know Nouvellet. We are criminals, and Paimon did eat that cake, but we're actually here to help Nervalet. Hmm... Is it possible that he knows we're here on a mission? Or is Paimon overthinking things? Yeah, Paimon thinks so too. He probably knew why we came here from the very beginning and intentionally wanted to send us a message. Maybe something like, Hey, I have my eyes on you, so don't try anything funny! Yeah, you're right. It's not like we can go back to Nouvellet empty-handed and say, The dude looks scary, so we gave up! <sighs> and besides, the Duke said that he was willing to go out of his way to show respect for Nouvellet, right? So, we at least need to try. But... Paimon hasn't gotten a clue where we should start our investigation! You mean... Yeah! That's what Paimon was thinking too! Paimon almost spilled the beans when we ran into him. Fortunately, based on his attitude, it looks like the Duke sees Linny as just another inmate. We worked so hard to help clear Linny and Lynette's names, and yet we turn around Bam! He's in prison anyway! Oh, right! Lenny and Lynette are from the House of the Hearth. They work for the Knaves, so they could be here to investigate too! Huh? Oh, it's a card! Paimon didn't notice it earlier! Hmm... It looks like a magician's prop. Lenny must have left it here. He's in prison and still doing his little tricks, huh? Let Paimon have a look. It was nice to bump into you again. Let's catch up in the production zone tomorrow. What in the world? It's really like he's greeting a buddy on the street. Paimon thought he'd write something important. If you say so, we can ask him what's going on tomorrow. Let's get some rest now. Hey, 
Hey, you're finally awake! Well, it's Paimon's first day as a prisoner. Last night, Paimon dreamed about getting interrogated by the guards until Paimon told them everything and then Paimon woke up. Hey, come on! It's just a dream, okay? Paimon wouldn't really squeal. Maybe. Hey, lazy bones. What are you still doing here? If you don't want to starve, then get yourselves over to the production zone. You must be the catch of the day. Looks like you've got some luck getting assigned this space. Yep, we just arrived yesterday and... Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking! Yes, sir. Listen carefully to my instructions. I don't want any mishaps. Every machine here is worth more than the both of you. Working around these machines can be very dangerous. Do your job well, and you can eat in the cafeteria after your shift. Get sloppy and you dine in the infirmary. Anyway, the Fortress of Merope doesn't want to lose a single one of its machines. And it also doesn't want to waste the production potential of any inmate. You got that? Got it! Your job is to use the machine over there to process widgets. Watch carefully, and make sure you step on the pedal at the right time. If the machine gets jammed, then give it a little maintenance with your fist. Here, take this. Bring me the process widgets, and I'll give you some credit coupons in exchange. Really bring the Knights of Favonius with you next time. So if the machine gets jammed, you 
we just need to attack it to fix the problem. Once the widget is hot enough to blow, jump to step on the pedal and hit the widget with the hammer. This one is... tolerable. Though, since the processing is done by machine, the product is all pretty much the same anyway. Alright, I'll pass you for now. And we'll count up how many credit coupons you've earned. <sighs> I'm exhausted. We're done now, right? Oh, that foreman. He's so scary that Paimon couldn't even speak. Ugh. Even though Paimon's starving and wants to head straight to the coupon cafeteria, we still need to meet Lenny first, right? He probably just finished up his work, too. He should be around here somewhere. Oh, this had better not be some disappearing act. Hmm. He doesn't seem to be around here. Let's try looking somewhere else. Here. Ah! Oh, you scared Paimon! How did you appear out of nowhere like that? Oh? You scare so easily now? Is there something worrying you these days? You little... The only thing we're worried about was trying to find you! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Come over here and keep it down. That's right. My brother simply can't stand to be away from me. Uh, it's not just Lynette. Fremine is also here. Do you still remember him? Oh! You mean that diver from the House of the Hearth, right? Pyro remembers seeing him in the Court of Fontaine before. Now hurry up and tell us. How did you end up as criminals this time? court to prove you were innocent, but now it looks like our incredible court battle was for nothing! Sadly, even the teeniest of things can land you in prison these days. I put together a street performance and used the popularity we gained from the Opera House incident to attract a big crowd. And then? Next, I invited several audience members to participate in the show. And then, with the entire audience watching, their wallet suddenly disappeared. My brother was charged with theft, and I was charged as his accomplice, having assisted him in his crime. <sighs> it really isn't that bad. The missing wallets are all in the leftmost drawer of the Maison Guardianage's big filing cabinet. We just need to see how long it takes to discover them. Yep, we should be released then. In terms of the magic trick itself, I think the performance went perfectly. To magic himself into prison. Indeed. Last time I hid my identity from you, I promised that I'd tell you absolutely everything if you were angry about it. No more secrets. So I don't plan on keeping anything from you this time either. At the moment, the House of the Hearth's interests don't conflict with yours at all. We were instructed by the father of our house, the Knave, to come here and conduct an investigation. <gasps> Told you so! See? 
See? Paimon guessed right. As for what we're investigating, perhaps you haven't heard, but the Fortress of Meropede hides a secret. Some even say that the entire fortress exists just to protect it. The House of the Hearth has been investigating this for a very long time, trying to uncover its mysteries. But recently, all of our informants, including the ones that had infiltrated the guards, suddenly vanished and have not been heard from since. We believe that this is a direct provocation, and it's the reason why we came here. Father has somehow managed to confirm that Fossilors does not have Fontaine's Gnosis. Huh? How did she manage to learn information that important? Father has her ways. Many of them are beyond our imagination, and we've never had the chance to see her at work. But we trust her conclusions. It was this information that led us to suspect that Fontaine's Gnosis might be in the Fortress of Meripede and is related to that secret. So it's all about the Gnosis again. Well, that's about it from our side. How about you two? Did Monsieur Nervilet send you here? Bingo! The name has been applying a lot of pressure. She wants to know what happened to Child, so we came here to investigate. Uh... Traveler, are we allowed to tell them? You don't need to worry too much about that. She's just asking for a report on Master Child's predicament as a means of pressuring you. Father used this situation as a pretext to negotiate with two high-ranking officials in the Court of Fontaine. She actually just wants to be able to make concessions on this matter for gains elsewhere. Almost like a bargaining chip. Sometimes you need an excuse to do things you otherwise couldn't. And a harbinger is more valuable than you might imagine. Of course, it's not a complete farce. If we do manage to find out what happened to Master Child too, then diplomatic relations with Fontaine could improve, and Snezhnaya might even be able to adjust its stance a bit. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like we're the only ones who actually care about Child's situation? The relationship between the Harbingers must be as bad as ever. I wouldn't go that far. Father just has different standards than we do when it comes to what can be sacrificed for an advantage. Uh, by the way, I have a suggestion. Why don't we team up? Even though we have different objectives, we're both here to investigate the Fortress of Meripede. It would be more efficient for us to work together. As you know, the House of the Hearth has many reasons to seek the Gnosis, but our highest priority remains resolving the prophesied crisis. You can trust us on that. See, I told you. Is that so? Hmm. Sure enough, it won't be easy to convince them to cooperate with us. Lenny seems to be thinking pretty hard about something. Of course he is. Lenny has been looking forward to a chance to reach an understanding with you ever since last we met. Or... I should say, we were really looking forward to teaming up with you this time. Lynette, just tell them everything, why don't you? It's okay to open up a little. <laughs> Very prudent of you, and consistent with your behavior since we first met. That's reasonable enough, and I agreed to cooperate on these terms as well. I was prepared for the worst, but you were actually more agreeable than I anticipated. <laughs> All right then, there's no time to lose. I have some information to share, so listen carefully. Since Lynette and I arrived here, our investigation uncovered the fact that the Fortress of Meripede has a forbidden zone. Most people just clammed up and wouldn't talk, but after asking the right questions, we were able to confirm the existence of the forbidden zone from the guards. You should be aware of that while you're investigating. A forbidden zone? Oh, could that be where the child disappeared to? You're right, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Good. That's the most suspicious thing about the fortress that we know of so far. We have a few other unanswered questions, and we'll be investigating those as quickly as we can. Anyway, I hope you find our information useful at least. Oh, 
Look at the time. You two must be hungry. You should go to the coupon cafeteria and get something to eat. I'll use my cards to get in touch with you again in the future. Oh, that's just what Paimon wanted to hear. Paimon's starving after all that work today. We can talk more about the investigation later. Let's go get some grub. I still have a lot to do at the guild. How about you take a rest while I go back? Pretty tiring. You think so, mate? <laughs> if I had a coupon for every fish who said that. Seems you fishies still haven't learned your lessons from your life up on the surface. If you take things at face value, then by the time you reach a dead end, you won't even know how you ended up on that road in the first place. <laughs> I like your attitude. I can, uh, let you in on a little something. Everyone's been telling you to just follow the rules and not cause any trouble for yourself. Am I right? But what they don't tell you is that the rules aren't exactly what they pretend to be. The rules for being a prisoner. The truth is, this place has a lot of hidden rules. Huh? Hidden rules? What do you mean? Not everyone knows about those rules, but whether you know them or not, once you break one, you might encounter something even worse than death. Really? Oh, now you're really scaring poor Paimon. Don't joke around like that! Of course. And I'd say that just disappearing would be one of the better outcomes. Oh, you mean that if there really are hidden rules, then Child's disappearance might have something to do with it? Uh, in that case, would you tell us some hidden rules? We definitely want to avoid breaking them. <laughs> 
Come on, mate. This is valuable information. The difference between life and death. Do you really think you can just ask and I would tell you? Paimon understands, but we don't have many credit coupons yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not like I'm going anywhere. Just come talk to me after you've saved enough. Moreover, your new fish, freshly caught and completely out of your element. What'd be the point in even telling you anything before you've gotten a handle on your new lives? Come and find me once you've been here longer. I'm usually around the rag and bone shop. Just call me V-Doc. Bye bye now. He left. Just like that. Huh. Do you think he's just trying to scare us into buying fake information from him? Yeah. It might be a good place to start in our investigation. Hidden rules, huh? But, like he said, we don't have any coupons and we're still not familiar with this place. Oh, there's nothing we can do about it now. We were so busy talking, we almost forgot to eat! Even if it's not the best, it's probably better while it's warm. Come on, dig in before it gets cold! that our shift is set for every morning and we're free to do whatever we want all afternoon. But it seems like most of the other inmates choose to continue working through the afternoon to earn more credit coupons. Oh, and they also said that you can use coupons to skip work in the morning and free up your time. They weren't kidding. Credit coupons really can be used to do anything here. Ah, Paimon's so tired. And we'll need to wake up and go to work in the morning. Without any credit coupons, it's not like we can really do anything else. Hmm. Nighty night, Traveler. Paimon hopes we can keep making progress on our investigation tomorrow. An ordinary dream? Oh, child's vision! So you had it with you this whole time? Maybe the vision connected child's consciousness to yours! And our investigation has its first major breakthrough! Good thing you brought the vision with you here! So what did you see in the dream? Do you know where? 
a child went? Huh. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll be a bit more helpful in the future. What's more important now is that it's the start of another new day as prisoners! Let's do our best to earn more credit coupons! What's the plan for today? Let's go! It's time to start working! If that guard Fielding catches us skulking about, he's sure to give us an earful! <laughs> Look who decided to show up! Get your butts in gear and get to work! Time's a wasted. Good, here you go. Remember to give me the widget once you've finished processing it. Hello, shift mates. I saw you finished your work, so I thought I'd come over and say hi. Oh, hey there! We've seen you before. Your assigned workspace is really close, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. The name's Rowan. This past few days, I couldn't help but notice the new faces working nearby. I guess we were destined to meet. I've been working here for almost 15 years. Even the foreman, Grainville, always calls me Chief. Whoa, you've been working here a long time, Chief! <laughs> if there's anything you'd like to know, just ask me. I know the work here in the production zone better than the back of my hand. Alright, Chief. We'll be sure to come to you first. <laughs> Did you just ask about... the rules? <laughs> Pretty sharp for newcomers. You've already heard about the rules, huh? Who'd you hear it from? Hmm. All right. Seeing as I'm the one who came over here, you're already calling me chief. I guess I can tell you a little. Truth is, you two keep working like this, you might be putting yourselves in danger. Huh? Wait, there's even a rule about that? What would have happened if you never told us about this? Well, it's usually not that easy to break one on accident. The conditions of the hidden rules are usually pretty specific. But once you do break one, bad things happen. If you work continuously in the production zone for three days, and if all you do besides eating and sleeping is just work, then something bad will happen during lunch on the third day. If I knew that, then I wouldn't be standing here talking to you, now would I? You mean, even you have never tried working three days like that before? There's actually a legend about this rule. They say that there was a worker who worked way harder than me. He was both efficient and eager on the job, and most other workers couldn't hold a candle to him. One time, he tried to test his limits and worked as long as he could. Then during lunch on the third day, he disappeared into thin air, as if he'd evaporated. Later, some people went and asked some of his past friends about him, but they said, never heard of the guy. What the? How could that happen? Unfortunately, we were assigned different production zones. I never saw for myself what he looked like. Wait, are you thinking that it was... Oh? 
You... Uh, listen, kid. This ain't the kind of thing you should be curious about. Let me tell you, you're better off forgetting about it and looking after yourself. Now I kind of regret ever telling you. Yeah, I agree with Chief here. Do you really want to try? <sighs> All right, if you insist. Looks like hard work really does get rewarded! Paimon's gonna take her time and save her every bite! What would you like to do this afternoon? Knowing child, he must have been there all the time! Oh, you must be the Traveler, huh? Sorry, mate, but, uh, competitors as strong as you are prohibited from participating. I don't make the rules, mind you, but I was given very specific instructions. Even convicts value their lives, don't they? I hope you can understand. <laughs> but, we have a game here that'll let you show off your strength, and you'll even earn some credit coupons in the process. What do you think? Interested? Will it cost us credit coupons? Of course. That's the cruel reality facing every competitor in a place like the Pancration Ring. Okay, great. Let me walk you through the rules. The targets in front of you will pop up one after another. You'll need to hit the targets in the same order that they popped up. If you can complete a few rounds in a row with no mistakes, then you'll win credit coupons. But the second you mess up the order, you lose. Game over. The game costs 300 credit coupons to have it go. So, you up for it? Thanks for your patronage, mate. Now, let the game begin! Not bad. Not bad at all. Here, the coupons you won. Be sure not to lose them. Oh, looks like we won't get a chance to sleep in as long as we're here. Let's get to bed early. We're getting used to life as convicts. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? What do you have planned for us?
look who decided to show up. Get your butts in gear and get to work. Time's a-wasting. Oh? What's with suddenly wanting to work so hard? You need coupons that badly? Sure. Let's just say we really want to test our limits. did well today. Let's keep it up! Ooh, Paimon's had it. Who knew that processing these widgets would be so tiring? Oh, that's it. Paimon doesn't even have the energy to talk anymore. Is it time to eat yet? Oh, Paimon's exhausted. It's just work, work, and more work. Paimon's little body can't handle this much longer. <gasps> Wait a sec. Now that Paimon thinks about it, haven't we been working non-stop for three days now? And now it's lunchtime! Oh, Paimon feels a shiver going down her spine. What's going to happen? But it doesn't seem like anything's changed at all. And we made it to the coupon cafeteria safely. Are the so-called hidden rules only a rumor after all? Well, there's no use to just guessing all day. Paimon's stomach has been grumbling the whole time. Let's just eat already! Paimon wonders what we'll get today! Maybe we'll get the super lucky meal! Wait! What? What? What in the world is this? What's with Paimon's food? And yours is the same! Is this stuff... meat? But it looks and feels so bizarre! What kind of chef would make food like this? What do you think is going on? Is this the bad thing that Rowan was talking about? No, stop right there! Paimon gets what you mean, just don't say it! Hey, isn't that Woolsey over there? He must have made the food, right? So let's just ask him about the food and be done with it! Hey, Woolsey, have a moment? Hmm? What is it? I'm about to go report the numbers for today's free meal, so you'd better make it quick. Uh, it's about the meat in our meals. Look, does it seem... normal to you? The meat? Oh, that. Looks perfectly fine to me. Totally normal. You better hurry up and chow down. Uh, how could this be fun? Hey, don't leave! You barely even looked at it! Hey! Ugh. What should we do now? Wolsey wouldn't even give us the time of day. <sighs> Is he trying to hide something? Yeah, looks like we have no other choice. Paima was positively famished a minute ago, but now she's... Lost her appetite. What would you like to do this afternoon? Since we have time now, let's focus on investigating some more. Oh, he hello. You two are the ones who were with His Grace. No need to be so nervous. Sorry, I couldn't help but think of His Grace once I saw you, and I... Uh... Oh, it's hard to say. Maybe I am. 
He's got a very overwhelming presence. It makes me feel like I'm just some insignificant little bug. Wait, seriously? Oh, I'm always indecisive, and I tend to make a mess of things. It's like a reflex. I just instantly start to tense up the moment I see a smart and capable person like His Grace. What? P please, don't say anything like that out loud. How could you possibly think something like that? I was injured a bit just now. Nothing major, I think I just pulled something. Little mishaps like this are unavoidable at work, you know? Huh. Paimon wouldn't have thought someone as experienced as the Chief would still get hurt on the job. I just knew you would say that. This is pretty embarrassing. Uh, where is Siegeween when you need her anyway? The one time I need to make a quick trip to the infirmary. Oh, you mean she wasn't in the infirmary? Yeah, the rumors say that there's never anybody in the infirmary in the half hour before lunch, and nobody knows where Siegewing gets off to. Huh, that's actually really strange. Siegewing's always super dedicated to her work. Where else would she possibly go? <sighs> Forget it. I can take care of a small sprain like this on my own anyway. No need to trouble her. Oh, wonderful. I was worried that you'd be busy trying to earn reward coupons all the time, but it seems like you haven't neglected your investigation work after all. Paimon likes having more coupons? But no one wants to work all the time. Have you also been investigating the area, Lynette? No, I was just slacking off, and you happened to catch me. My brother is still obsessed with anything remotely related to the Forbidden Zone. But knowing him, it won't be long before we get more leads. Oh, before I forget, this is for you. Huh? Credit coupons? Why are you giving us these? I've been here longer than you. Coupons aren't a resource in particularly short supply. What is in short supply are interesting people to talk with. Aw, that's so nice of you, Lynette. We'll be sure to make good use of these coupons then. Thanks a bunch! Looks like a research notebook. That suspicious guy peeking into the infirmary just now. Are they a fan of Sea Dream? He must have dropped this. Let Paimon read it real quick. The Melisi perceive the world very differently from humans. There are significant deviations. As a result, their sense of aesthetics and beauty is also very different from that of humans. This must be taken into consideration when giving gifts. Whoa, this all sounds pretty serious. He sure did his homework. And as for the notebook, let's take it.
daydream? Aren't you supposed to be in the infirmary? What are you doing in the production zone? Hello, traveler. Paimon? Everyone's usually busy around now, and we don't have any patients to look after in the infirmary. I thought I'd come here and enjoy the sight of everyone hard at work. Enjoy? Uh, what's there to enjoy here? It's really worth watching. I often stand here and observe everyone. Humans are just so interesting and adorable. I like to watch your expressions while you work. Uh, are you talking about pets or people? Oh, I can see why you think that, but you shouldn't jump to conclusions. See, we Melazines are a different species, and we see the world very differently from humans. It's very easy for me to observe everyone's condition. All it takes is one look, and I can tell which workers are exhausted. Wait, Melazines can see that? Huh, that does sound useful for being a nurse. <sighs> yes. Running around tending to everyone's health is very fulfilling. But I'd much prefer it if you're all happy and free from exhaustion and pain in the first place. Take care of your body. Make sure you eat well. Always rest when you're tired from work and don't push yourself too hard. We'll definitely take care of ourselves. Thanks for the reminder. Hey, it's the Traveler and Paimon. <laughs> no need to tease me, okay? I won't trip on the same step twice. Listen, I feel ashamed about last time. Thank you for praising me in front of His Grace. Here are the extra credit coupons he gave me. I'd like you to have them. Huh? No, we couldn't take them. They're your reward after all. But when I was welcoming you, I didn't do anything but give you the stink eye. <sighs> Come on, I insist. These coupons are nothing compared to getting the attention of His Grace. I won't take no for an answer. <laughs> has hit a dead end. Well, we'll keep searching for more clues tomorrow. Good night, traveler. <sighs> the dawn of a new day. My mom feels like we're getting used to life as convicts. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? What do you have planned for us? After working here so long, we're really starting to get the hang of it. But doing the same 
thing all the time can get old pretty quickly. How are you holding up? Yeah, it's good to kick back and relax once in a while. Afternoon. Knowing child, he must have been there all the time. Oh, back for another try? I hope you brought enough credit coupons this time. All right, then get ready to play. Your strength really shouldn't be underestimated. Now I get why you're prohibited from participating in any official fights. Nobody who values their life would be willing to get in the ring with you. However, you two haven't tried betting on the outcome of a Pancration match yet, have you? Just go talk to Rusimov. Buy a ticket for whichever fighter you think will win. There's a big payout if the fighter you support comes out on top. That's normal. Just watch a few matches and get a feel for the fighters. It won't be long before you can pick winners in your sleep. He's got a point. Why don't we give it a try? If we have enough coupons, we could probably bet at random until we figure everything out. Huh. Bet at random, huh? Uh, well, how should I put it? Uh, it's not like you can't do that, but I'd advise you to give it some more thought first. Huh? We shouldn't get too carried away. What's the problem? What? I... <sighs> Never even picked a boxer before, and you already know about the rules? You're not just strong fighters. Seems you're pretty perceptive, too. <sighs> Might as well tell you about it, since you already know that much. Plus, I... I think you've got the potential to be one of my greatest customers. I think I can let you in a bit. Besides, I don't want to risk ever losing a customer like you. Uh, is it that serious? Okay. The hidden rule here is, if you buy both boxers' tickets and support them both, something bad will happen the next morning. So, the rule is that we shouldn't pick both boxers in the same fight, but if anyone actually did that, wouldn't they be guaranteed to lose coupons? Who would do that anyway? And what do you mean by something bad will happen? How would I know? Not like I'm stupid enough to do that. But I've heard a story about the rule. According to the rumor, there was a masked boxer who possessed incredible skill and power. None of his opponents even stood a chance against him. However, in the final match, the organizers told him to take off his mask. He refused and never showed up to the fight. 
And after that, he was never seen again. Some say he died, or that he was taken care of by the event's organizers. But everyone remembers that he was someone who cherished honor above all else. In his eyes, supporting both boxers in a match would dishonor the competition itself. So you mean, it's like, a curse? He'll take vengeance on anyone who does that? No, he was always wearing a mask, like he was intentionally trying to hide his identity. I don't even know anything about his past. Traveler, do you think that boxer was... Huh? We will? You're not serious, are you? Look, here I was just trying to be nice and warn you, yet here you are trying to break it on purpose? Yeah, it sounds pretty scary to Paimon. Uh, seems you've made up your mind. Just be sure to protect Paimon, okay? Betting on both fighters will set you back about 3,000 credit coupons. If you have enough, then go ahead and give it a try. Just don't come running back to me if something happens. Ah, we woke up so early today that Paimon's been nodding off all afternoon. Good thing it's finally time for bed. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to get up. Paimon still feels completely exhausted from yesterday. What do you have planned for us? After working here so long, we're really starting to get the hang of it. But doing the same thing all the time can get old pretty quickly. How are you holding up? Yeah, it's good to kick back and relax once in a while. Ooh, it looks disgusting! Oh, Paima misses your cooking now. What would you like to do this afternoon? Sure! If we're not going to work, then let's kill some time at the pancreation ring! Hmm? Are you two here to buy tickets? Better be quick about it. Another match is about to start. Who are the boxers in the next round? We have the reigning champ, Le Grappler, versus a contender from the Eastern Prison Block, Demon Horde. Are those their nicknames, or did they choose those names themselves? Either way, super weird. Uh, since you're new around here, I'll help you out and give you a little suggestion. Even though Le Grappler is the crowd favorite, Demon Horde is a first-class dark horse with incredible potential. Anyway, for this match, I recommend that you pick... Huh? F uh, for both fighters? Uh, I could tell you're new to this, but I didn't think you were completely clueless. Maybe you don't quite understand the rules, no? Let me try to explain again for you more clearly. You see... Oh, no need, no need. Um, we're aware that we're going to lose coupons. All right, then, if you're absolutely sure. Remember, no refunds once you buy the tickets. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Just shut up and take our coupons. <laughs> A productive day. Hope we can make even more progress tomorrow. A 
Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Package here for you. The next time you buy something, go pick it up yourself. I'm not a delivery man, you know. Huh? A package? For us? Did you buy something, Traveler? Ah, Paimon's not quite awake yet, so why don't you go take a look? Alright! Yesterday we broke the hidden rule and bought tickets for both boxers! Oh, maybe this package is the bad thing that Colin said would happen. Huh? Paimon suddenly feels wide awake. Wait, maybe you let Paimon go hide somewhere first. Just call Paimon after you opened it. Hey, wait, wait! Paimon's still here! Don't open it! Ah! Huh? What is it? Are you okay? Uh, let Paimon take a peek too. Oh, it's just a small bottle. But the color of the liquid inside looks so wrong. Almost like... Alright, that's enough of that. No need to say it out loud. Paimon already knows what you're trying to say. Ooh, no way! Get that stuff away from Paimon! Uh, Paimon thinks we shouldn't open the bottle until we figured out what's going on. Just trust Paimon in this one, okay? What do you have planned for us? Though it feels nice to slack off a little, less work means less coupons! Let's make the most of our morning! no way to send it all out. Maybe I'll never get a chance to leave. Uh, who are you? We've never seen you before, and you don't look like a fellow convict. Uh, I I'm not! Of course I'm not. Please, don't mistake me for a criminal. I'm a good, law-abiding citizen. Then what are you doing here? You sure seem anxious about something. I'm a promoter for Fontico, and I'm usually responsible for promoting our drink products. I thought I could complete my task here quickly and return to headquarters, but I've been here way longer than I anticipated. Oh, a promoter from Fontico? So what kind of problem did you run into? Uh, I'm so upset. It's all because of that Duke. After discussing the company's promotional plans with him, he told me outright that my project was worthless. However, in light of our long history of successful collaboration, I still tried to patiently explain the details. However, to my surprise, he just cut me off while I was speaking. <clears throat> Let me take a moment and recall his exact words. I'm just gonna stop you there and say no. If anything, I'm saving you time. It seems you don't fully understand the value of credit coupons here, nor do you understand the value of your own products. The former is because you are from the overworld. That's understandable, and I don't blame you for that. But as for the latter, only someone monumentally stupid, so breathtakingly stupid that they were completely ignorant of the value of credit coupons, despite living in the underworld, would ever possibly consider buying your drink. Let's just forget it. <sighs> anyway, that's how he rejected my proposal and asked me to come up with another solution with the condition that it doesn't cause any trouble for him. Can you believe that guy? Uh, well, he is the head honcho here. Not much you can do about that. We met him too and could tell that he's the kind of guy that's hard to pin down. Fine, fine. I know, I should just let it go. I'm on his turf, after all. His house, his rules.
Hey, I, I heard you crazy fools really did it. You bought tickets to support both fighters, didn't you? Well, I, did anything happen? Well, the next day we received a mysterious package, but we still haven't made any sense of the contents. So it is real. You didn't become cursed or anything like that, did you? Are you both still okay? Wait, are you sure that it's still you controlling your bodies right now? Uh, Paimon's not sure. What do you think, Traveler? Is Paimon still Paimon? Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Hmm, yeah, you two don't seem to have changed at all. But I wouldn't let your guard down just yet. Still, I didn't expect you would actually do it. You'd actually throw away coupons like that just to satisfy your curiosity? Even if we bought tickets like everybody else, it's not like we could hope to earn any coupons. When it comes to things like this, it's always the organizer who makes the real profits. Hey, just what are you trying to imply? The Pancration Ring is an honest business, and we really don't make much from selling tickets. We make so little that even the current tournaments can only be held thanks to funding from the producer of Fanta. Oh, so it's the company that manufactures Fanta sponsoring the events? Paimon thought all of this was thanks to the Duke's support. Let's just say it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. They reached out to us first, hoping to promote Fanta products in the forges of Meropede. Uh, anyway, you try and take extra good care of yourselves these next few days, you hear? on it. Maybe it's some flyers from the company. Uh, okay. But if someone catches us, they could accuse us of trying to steal the company's secrets, couldn't they? Oh, <laughs> you're right. Guess there's nothing to worry about then. Let Paimon have a look here. Without assistance from the Fontaine Research Institute, development of the new product has been slow, and some researchers on the project have voiced concerns. We have no choice but to let the new product undergo the first phase of promotional trials without a designated name or packaging. We will adjust the direction of future development according to feedback. We have decided to only conduct closed, small-scale trials for the time being. Sure doesn't seem like anything unusual. The company is just trying to develop some new products besides Fanta. But it sounds like things aren't going well at all. Uh, let's put these papers back where we found them and make it look like nobody went through them. Okay, good. shouldn't get her hopes up. What would you like to do this afternoon? Seems 
are really getting the hang of things at the pen creation ring now. But just playing the same game over and over? It's getting kind of tiring. Yeah, why don't we have Collins lower the difficulty a little? You know, so we can just breeze through each level. A mysterious box? A bottle of crimson liquid? Oh, Paimon still doesn't know what to make of it. Do you have any ideas, Traveler? Really? Huh. Then it looks like that part of the investigation led us nowhere. Well, maybe we'll have better luck tomorrow. Good night, Traveler. Okay, so we've investigated two of the hidden rules. <sighs> Paimon didn't think this prison would have so... many weird things going on. We'd better pick up the pace with our investigation, otherwise we'll never get anywhere. Yeah, let's skip work for now and put our time to good use. today. Ah. Seeing you at this time must mean you've already saved up a lot of credit coupons. Or at least enough to skip work. <laughs> Seems you're getting into the swing of things around here. Impressive. Very impressive. So, now can you tell us about the hidden rules you know? Hmm. If that's what you want to know, I guess you couldn't have come at a better time. Huh? What do you mean it's a good time? Leonid and those other pesky broke urchins have all gone to work in the production zone. I wouldn't want them listening in without paying up. We get it! Just tell us already! So, you know those pipes that make strange sounds? Don't ever, ever go near them at night. Even if you manage to avoid the guards, you might find something even more terrible there. Something even more terrible? Like what? A group of cannibals. Cannibals? In the Fortress of Meripede? Every month, they meet a few times in the dead of night. Rumor has it they might be connected to the people that have disappeared here. But... What's even scarier is that they have a special proclivity. Since they have no way to dispose of the leftover remains, they have ways to transform them into other forms and keep them in the fortress forever. Uh, Paima might already know what you mean by other forms. So that's what's going on here. Oh, Paimon's stomach doesn't feel so good. You two look pretty skeptical. No matter. Learning the truth behind dark secrets isn't necessarily a good thing. I've got things to do too. I suggest you just act like I never told you anything. Traveler, can we just trust him on this one? Oh, Paimon doesn't want her blood and flesh entombed here for all eternity? So that's how 
how you see the situation. Huh. You know, Paimon does feel a little better about it now. <sighs> when will all the secrets end? The guys who went to work in the morning are back. Let's go ask them. <laughs> Just stay away from me. What? What are you saying? You shouldn't go around saying stuff like that. What are you talking about? Listen, you should keep your nose out of other people's business. Too sure is suspicious. Like they're trying to avoid us. But if they're being so obvious about acting weirdly, do you think they might just be trying to lure us in? Oh, this is all getting way too creepy for Paimon. So you mean we still need to investigate some more? Okay, if you say so. Hello, Fielding. What do you want? Criminals like you ought to be working right now. Catch my drift. We just want to ask you a simple question. Have you ever discovered anything odd during your nighttime patrols? Why are you asking about something like that? Whatever happens at night isn't your concern. All you need to worry about is getting enough sleep. Uh... Well... Right! We've heard it happens a few times every month. But I'm on a sensitive ear, so it makes it hard to sleep. Really? I see. Uh, but it's not like I'm on duty every night. And now that you mention it, I recall my colleagues talking about something like that before. They say that strange things tend to happen at night on pipe cleaning days. Lots of us don't willingly take those shifts. So, what happens at night on pipe cleaning days? And they just conduct regular cleaning of the fortress's drainage facilities. There are three pipe cleaning days per month. And it just so happens that today is one of the scheduled days. You can try to confirm the sounds tonight if you want, and if they're real, then I can report the issue to my superiors for you. Oh, okay. Then we'll keep both ears out tonight. Now, if that's all, then I'll be leaving now. I advise you not to try anything funny, though. Even if I'm not on duty tonight, someone will still be watching you. Don't worry, we don't want any time added to our sentences. <laughs> Oh, he left. So what do you think about the pipe cleaning days he mentioned? Right, both are a possibility. But Fielding did say that tonight is a cleaning night. Paima knew you would say that. Alright, sounds like we'll be up all night tonight then. Paima just hopes the guards don't catch us. She dozes off. Paimon's worried something might happen if you go alone. Huh? Traveler? Did you fall asleep? 
asleep already? Patrolling guards! I know you. You were the ones we saw. Huh. You've got guts showing up here. You know who we are, right? You'd better leave now. Ain't nobody coming here to save you. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, so what if they were? If you push us, we can make those rumors a reality at any time. Hey, what's the point of all those rumors anyway? trying to do I don't have to tell you anything if you turn around go back to the dormitories and act like you never saw anything then I'll pretend that you never showed up here yeah scram nothing worth seeing here huh what did you say isn't that exactly what boss said when he left hey do you know our boss oh we had no idea our boss was such a big deal. He always kept his identity a secret. So, did he have you come here to find us? Oh, so your child's crew here? Seems like he had no problem fitting in. We're the only ones who heard him say those words when he left that night. So, unless he somehow told you those exact same words after that... Hmm. All right. I guess that's proof enough for me. I believe you. Wow! Those dreams of yours sure come in handy! We gave him the business for a while, and would always give him a hard time when he first came to the Fortress of Maripede. But here in the Fortress, the strong will always earn respect. He was working the longest hours and racking up wins in the Pancration Ring. He could always see how amazing he was, even when he was teaching us a lesson. So eventually, we all decided to follow him. But one day, he suddenly told us that he had to find a way to escape this place, no matter the cost. He said it was because he heard that call again. And as his crew, if the boss wants something, then it's our job to get it done. 
So, we got to work, and used the hidden rules that were here to make up and spread the rumor about the cannibal rule. We just wanted to give him a better chance of escaping on a night after the pipes had been cleaned. Oh, thanks to your rumor, nobody would want to come anywhere near here, prisoner or guard. Wow, it sure is easy to exploit people's fear of the unknown. But has a child already escaped? Why are you all still coming here after pipe cleaning day? Because as far as we know, the pipe he went into isn't actually an exit. It should be a dead end. It leads to an abandoned factory area, and even if there were a way to escape from there into the sea, we're still way too deep. No one could ever reach the surface alive. But Boss still insisted on going in. It's like he was obsessed about it. So we told him that we'd pretend as if he never existed while he was gone. And that if he wanted to come back, he should wait for night time on a pipe cleaning day. That way, we could meet him here and help cover the whole thing up. So you come and wait here through the night a few times a month just because of that promise? Yeah, but it's been so long now. We already know in our hearts that he must have managed to escape somehow. Uh, is it also possible that something unfortunate happened to him? Nothing could ever defeat Boss or slow him down. It's one thing we know for sure. Okay, okay. Pina was just brainstorming possibilities. All right. Keep quiet and follow us. The way up from here has been sealed off. It's impossible to get through. Boss left by going down from here. It uh, wasn't full of water at the time. Later, we came back hoping to have a look. That's when we found out it had been completely flooded. It's impossible to navigate unless you're an extremely skilled diver. Do you think Child got trapped by the water? Not likely. We all know that Boss was an incredible swimmer. Really? Then have him come investigate, pronto. Just be sure to tell us if you get any news about Boss. It's getting late. We should leave before the guards come this way. Yeah, we learned a lot about what happened to Child here. Let's get going! Whew. We finally learned some key information. Seems all of our investigative work has finally started to pay off. When you said you knew a diver, you were talking about Fremine, right? If we ask Linny, he'll definitely have Fremine help us. Ugh. Why is Child like this? What was he doing going into the pipes? Not making our jobs easier, that's for sure. Fortunately, though, it seems like it's only a matter of time now before we find out what really happened. Now that we can finally relax, Paimon's starting to feel super sleepy. <sighs> Let's try to get some rest while we still can. Nighty night, night, Traveler! Ugh, it's morning already? Oh, Paimon still needs more sleep. Huh? Wait, look over there! Isn't that... It's one of Linny's cards! Let Paimon see what's written on it! Maybe you haven't heard, but today is the monthly free day. Everyone has the day off today, which makes it the perfect time to do some investigating. It's been a while since we last talked. Have you been making any progress lately? Let's meet at our usual spot in the factory area before lunchtime. I have new information! Ooh, today's our lucky day! We have the day off! From the sound of it, Lenny has been making progress with his investigation. Wonder what he's discovered! Hmm, we still have some time before we meet up. Let's talk with the people here for a bit more before we go!
片。If you ask me, those pompous parasites on the surface act like they're all a bunch of aristocrats. Do any of them give half a hoot about a bunch of dogs like us? Hey, speak for yourself, mate. I'm no dog. Oh, you think you're special or something? If you're here, then you're just a convict like the rest of us. I've heard that even if you're released after serving your sentence, going back to life on the surface ain't any better. Once a criminal, always a criminal. We're marked for life.、Uh, I don't buy that. Hey, how cool would it be if the whole world was destroyed by a giant flood and everyone had to start over from nothing? What kind of filthy bilge water you spewing? I have family up there. You best shut your sewer hole with talk like that. Listen, things ain't so great on the surface, but who says that you have to leave? I've heard that you can still stay here and work even after you've served your sentence. Not bad, if you ask me. Who wants to live in the ruddy overworld anyway? <laughs> and what makes you think they'd want to hire someone like you? <laughs> That's one of the great mysteries of the universe: how someone as useless as you is so confident. Whoa! Sounds like they're really unhappy about the overworld. Speaking of which, Paimon never heard anyone use the words overworld or underworld when we were living up there. Is it only something the inmates down here say? That's true. So I said, that's not a faucet. Hey, hey, who are you two? Why'd you come over all of a sudden? Oh, uh, sorry for eavesdropping. Sounds like you were talking about something private. Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> They're just looking to join in on our fun. That's all. Hey, don't pretend like it's okay for them to just interrupt us like that. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. You're lucky we don't mind extroverts that much. <laughs> you hear that, Quisto? What nice! Your expressions tell me you're looking to hear some juicy info. Am I right? <laughs> But before that, it just so happens that I know you two. Really? Are we that famous? You're kidding. How often does anyone get a personal tour led by His Grace himself? Practically everyone was talking about it. Word has it that you also caused quite the kerfuffle. A little mistake, huh? I like the way you put it. You see, people with a good attitude can join our group anytime, unlike some of the others here. Your group? I'm Quisto, and this is Lavaroon. People usually call us the Bombshell Bros, but don't worry, we're not playing with bombs or anything. It's just that our information is always so explosive, and we blow minds on the regular. So you two really like to gossip? You sure know how to embellish. No, no, you don't get it. Knowing intelligence will make things better for you here. For example, knowing who's working with whom, who has the latest rumors, who's not getting along. Wouldn't you like to know all that? Whoa! All this info's worth something, you know. You should prove you're worthy of it. I don't mind him. Quisto's always this way. Just play nice and say something to massage his ego. The welfare meals. Talk about the welfare meals. Right, right. That meal we had yesterday was super delicious. Paimon can still taste it whenever she closes her eyes. Is that so? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I've been helping out with making those welfare meals. I've been working as a kitchen assistant for about a month and a half now. 
Oh, so you're the one who made those delicious steaks. Amazing. You could be a professional chef. You are correct. I am a true professional. In fact, I even went to culinary school. But enough about that. Since you like my cooking, I guess that means we share similar tastes. Listen carefully. This little bombshell will help you learn what's really going on here in the fortress. Listen, kids. The power structure within the fortress is quite complicated. The overworlders couldn't care less about us down here. We're basically dogs to them. You've already met the one person here you should never cross, the Duke, Risley. He knows more than you think. And if he doesn't care about something, then he often doesn't bother dealing with it. Those who have the Duke's attention get all kinds of special perks, even better treatment in the infirmary. I know who you mean. It's that Jurier character, right? I don't think there's anything useful about him at all. Why does he visit the infirmary practically every day? Is it normal for anyone to be going in and out of there so often? If you ask me, he's just faking it to get out of work. But did you know that Churia was a talented researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute before he came here? There's no denying that. I don't care if he was a researcher that could turn dirt into mora. Once you're in the fortress of Meripede, you're just another inmate like everybody else. Speaking of which, the last time I saw him, he was passing by the corridor with Lorvine. I also heard they started arguing in the library and got into a fight, right? Guess that's just how terrible of a guy he is. You mean he hit a woman? Wow, I never imagined he was that bad. But that Lorvine's also quite the odd one, you know? She's always gabbing away, got into a fight with a man, and she also got sent to the infirmary. Come to think of it, I always see her going to the sick bay every couple of days, too. Huh. Wait a second. You don't think. Do you think it could it be that they're secretly meeting there to go on dates? Ah, but it's really hard to imagine. <laughs> After all, I do remember seeing Lorvine beat Jerry to a pulp that one time. And we might be overthinking. Yeah, you! Say, do you like playing card games? You know, like Genius Invocation TCG? You TCG players are like mint in the wild! Literally sprouting up everywhere! Hey, come on now. What's wrong with finding fellow invocation aficionados? Anyway, care to join me for a game? Ah, alright. No pressure. But why would you be looking for people to play Genius Invocation in a place like this? Don't people usually come here to fight? <laughs> Whether you're throwing down cards or throwing punches, it's all a competition, isn't it? It's all the same in my eyes. There are lots of card players here in the fortress. When I saw you, I immediately thought, hey, even outsiders from other nations play cards. So I came over to say hi. Sure. Great! Since you've been here longer than us, you need to flex your seniority a little bit, right? Maybe you could start by telling us newcomers some stories about this place. I thought you would have already heard everything by now. 
All right, then. Did you have anything specific in mind? Or do you want me to just pick a topic? Why don't you pick? We'll let you know if we've heard it already. All right. Have you heard any strange rumors since you've arrived? Then did you know that there are some people who are always gossiping over in the corner? Yes, yeah, so you've already met those two. <laughs> They're quite a pair. They always keep an eye out for the latest happenings and gossip about everything. I've never seen anyone with more time on their hands. I heard that they used to be a chef and a bartender before they were sent down here. You know how bartenders are, always chatting with customers. And chefs love to pass the time just hanging out when they're not cooking. Hmm, good to know. Do you have anything else to tell us? Hmm, let me think. Sounds like you want to hear something a little more tantalizing. Oh, did you know that the Duke was also a convict in the Fortress of Meripede before? Huh? Wait, are you serious? That's right. The Duke was an inmate just like you and me. Seems he was exiled here for committing some crime. Who knows how he ended up rising up to become the warden, though. To go from an ordinary inmate to becoming the manager of the whole place? I'm not gonna lie, I kinda respect that. A forbidden zone? Hmm, sounds like something that someone just made up. I've never heard of that. Where did you hear about it? It's just a rumor we've been hearing, but no worries if you've never heard of it. Do you have anything else you can tell us? Anything else? Hmm, not that I can think of, but I'll be sure to tell you anything interesting I hear next time. You'll have to play a game of Genius Invocation with me first, though. Okay, we've talked to just about everyone, and it's about time for us to go meet Linny. According to the card he left us, we should go meet him in the production zone. Look in your eyes. You found something? Hey, this is no time to be modest. Just tell him we found a boatload of information. Oh, as expected of the legendary duo, you have my full and undivided attention. Huh. I'd have never guessed that myself. The rumors swirling about this place are unreliable after all, and Master Child probably went missing because he found a way out. He is a harbinger after all. I suppose he's much more resourceful than I initially gave him credit for. Unfortunately, this isn't enough for our final report to Father. We need to find out Master Child's exact whereabouts. Father told me that even though Master Child said he was just coming to Fontaine for a vacation, he actually had some personal reasons. 
his agenda might be linked to his disappearance. His escape route is already flooded, so we'll have to test someone with professional diving skills to chase after him. Well, when you put it that way, it's obvious that only Fremenay would be up to the task. Bingo! Is he around? He's working today. Coming here as a group would have attracted too much attention. I'll talk to him about it later. It's the least I can do. We're all in this together, so it's only fair for us to fulfill our end of the bargain. Honestly, I'm far more impressed by you guys managing to collect all this information right under Risley's watchful eyes. <laughs> Collecting information has always been our strong point. Now, let me think. To find out more information, Fremenay will have to retrace Master Child's original route. And if he's to do that, he'll have to set out on the next pipe cleaning day at the earliest. That's six days from now. Hmm. And after that, he'll probably take another two or three days to return. You can even estimate how long it'll take for him to get back? We've been working together for a long time. We know each other's capabilities like the backs of our hands. Traveler, what say you to meeting here nine days from now? We'll be able to pick up Fremenay while we're at it, too. Oh, and there's just one last thing we'd like your help with. Though we can just sit back and wait for Fremenay's report on Master Child's whereabouts, we still need to make more progress on the investigation of the Forbidden Zone. Fremenay's no master of disguise, Lynette's still working on getting intel from the other areas, and I'll need to spend some time helping Fremenay prepare for his diving mission. So, you are the only ones we can count on. What do you want us to do? Will it be hard? Well, I won't call it easy, per se, but I think you'll be able to pull it off. Listen carefully. You'll need to find an excuse to get into the infirmary and investigate the room and environs. You've mentioned several sketchy-looking people always meeting at the infirmary earlier, so it probably has something to do with the secret we're hoping to uncover. You've already met the head nurse, so she'll be less suspicious of you. Investigate the internal structure of the infirmary and any active dealings within, and pass those on to me alongside anything else you're able to discover. But also, there's no need to take risks. Don't forget, safety always comes first. Oh, my apologies, I just started rambling out of habit. It was almost as if I was talking to my younger brother. But that's not a bad thing, right? Alright, then we'll head out as soon as we finish our prep. Let's go our separate ways for now, then. Don't forget, we meet here again in nine days. Stay safe. Hey, stay here for now. Paimon will take a peek. Hmm... Hmm? There seem to be several people inside. Right. I feel like it's... It's not impossible. understand them from here, so why don't we just try to talk to them in person? Let's go as soon as you're ready!
Let me take a look. Please, lie down over here. Don't worry, I'll get you to the bed safely. Here, hold on to my shoulder and walk slowly. <sighs> you can do it, Traveler! Don't apologize, you're sick after all. Now, please relax, I'm just going to do a preliminary checkup on you. He's not in any mortal danger. <sighs> that's our worst fear out of the way. Eh? Oh, that's good. But... I'll continue my diagnosis of the patient now. Please, relax and take a deep breath. <sighs> Don't sense serious damage to your organs, either. Does it hurt when I press here? Huh? But based on my initial checkup, there shouldn't be a problem here. Oh, how strange. Hmm. What about here? Does this hurt? Oh! Hmm. I understand. So that's what it is. I think you just ate something that disagreed with you. That's all. Nothing too serious. Huh, outside of a pretty bad stomach ache when it decides to act up. <sighs> so that's what it is. Thank goodness it's not anything more serious. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and there have been other inmates complaining about the food recently. I'll inform our head chef, Mr. Wolsey, of this problem as soon as possible. Congratulations! The health risk is incredibly low, so you should recover within a couple days. Why don't you take a rest here while I go get some medicine for you? Miss Lorvine, I'll have to trouble you to help me look after this new patient while I'm gone. Very well. Ah, <sighs> and she hopped away just like that. Hello, so how are you feeling now? His stomach aches really bad. He was stumbling about the whole way here, so Paimon's really worried. If Miss Sijuin says it's not a serious problem, then there's no need to worry. She's the best medic we've got down here. But it also looks like she's the only medic you've got down here. Ah, uh, well, that's true. What do you mean, that's true? That's really misrepresenting the situation. Of course I can't speak for the whole fortress, but it's not like everyone imprisoned here is useless, you know? Though they may have committed crimes and gotten locked up here as a result, they still know a thing or two about medicine, and they helped Miss Sishuin take care of the sick and injured. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But did you have to lecture me about it in front of another patient? Aren't you a patient too? Where did all your energy come from? Uh... Huh, that's correct. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. Are you two also sick? We've been sick a while. I come back every once in a while for checkups and to pick up the medicines Miss Sijuin prescribes for us. That's just the nature of chronic illnesses. As for her... <laughs> you could say she fancies herself as Miss Sijuin's capable helper because she learned a bit of medical knowledge ages ago. Please watch your mouth, Mr. Jurier. Don't forget that you are the primary reason I have frequent heart palpitations. Hey, don't start arguing now! Please, keep it civil at least!
someday, so there's no need to argue over silly things like this! <laughs> but... <laughs> Release. It's way too early for us to even think about that. And who the heck knows if we'd even be able to continue our previous lives? Please allow me to end this boring and useless conversation. Oh, and Mr. Jurier, I don't want to see your face here again anytime soon. And same to you, Miss Lorvine. Anyway, that was more than enough rest for me, so I'm going to get out of this excessively noisy place. See you later, everyone. He just slowly walked off? Like that? Hmph. <laughs> That's just what he's like. I'm sorry you had to see all of that. I'm Lorvine, and that's... Well, his name is Jurier, but I hope you'll never have cause to remember his name. You really can't stand him, huh? I mean, can you blame me? Who would like someone who's as arrogant and obsessed with weird research topics as he is? <clears throat> but there's no need to keep dwelling on him. I... I'll accompany you two for a while. Miss Zishwin should be back soon, and I'm sure you'll feel better as soon as you've had some of her medicine. No, no. It's nothing. I'm back! Did you rest like you promised? Thank you for getting our medicine, Miss Zishwin. Did you all cooperate with your bed rest? I trust that nobody got up to walk around. <sighs> Good. Here. This should be two days' worth of medicine for you. Take one pill now, and then continue your bed rest. Ah, uh, Miss Lorvine, I left in a bit of a hurry just now. Do you still remember if we discussed the color of the pill that you should be taking today? Oh, I remember. You said it should be yellow. Yellow, huh? I understand. These are yours. Please, make sure to go to bed early after taking them tonight. You'll benefit from a good night's sleep. Alright, then I'll also be on my way now. I hope you feel better soon, too. See ya! I'm going to fill out your medical record now. You're widely known as the Traveler, right? I just want to double-check a few details, if that's alright with you. Those two made quite the commotion just now, so why don't we let the Traveler rest? Paimon can answer the questions instead! Mm-hmm. So his primary symptoms are abdominal pain, with secondary symptoms of nausea. Uh, is there anything else? Hmm... That's it! All right, then. Is there anything we should know besides to take the meds? No, his base constitution is quite good, so I'm sure he'll recover quite quickly after taking the medicine. Please, make sure to stick to bland or less stimulating foods, and don't stay up too late at night. Got it! Papa will hold the Traveler to that for sure! Oh, you're going to take a nap already? Okay then, you get some rest. places together. He may look a bit under the weather now, but he's actually super strong. So you're the best of companions. Well, don't worry. He'll recover soon. Ah, you're awake. How do you feel? You slept for a really long time, but we never left. without a worry in the world. Remember to take your meds regularly, and remember bland foods! Mm-hmm! Thank you, Miss Sijuin!
something. To be able to fall asleep like that and even sleep talk the entire time, you scared Paimon half to death! No, but you kept mumbling things along the lines of, Pyron, go take my grilled fish and put down the Adeptus Temptation now! Paimon talked with Sijuin the entire time you were asleep. She seems like she's just a sincere nurse and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary? Whoa! You really are super thorough! All those tiny little suspicious things that Paimon didn't even pick up on! We've got to give the info to Linny! Did you two run into any trouble over the past few days? No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you've sent. Fremenay successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago. And as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you did in exchange for Fremenay's help, you've already done more than enough. Infiltrating a guarded stronghold is a different kind of job from a one-off investigation. We want to avoid using the same faces over and over and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should be the one to finish the job. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. Hmm, perhaps that's true. You are both very good people, and we've come to appreciate that more than anyone else. Unfortunately, there's still one thing that could get between us, lest you've forgotten. The matter of our respective loyalties. You've mentioned before that you've had some run-ins with the Fatui. I can understand that feeling, so I assume you're just helping us out of the kindness of your hearts? Well, everyone could use some more friends. We'll be counting on you to help us in the future, too! Mm-hmm. Since I see you as friends, then it's even more important for us to protect you from any peril. Fremenay and Lynette feel the same way. Glad to hear it. Then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremenay returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. Is now really a good time to go over? According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Lynette knows this as well, so this should be a good time to meet up with her. Also, I'm her brother, remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Okay, then let's head over right away!
Lynette should be here right now. Huh. Strange. L Lynette? As expected, Sijuin isn't here, but why isn't Lynette here? No, Lynette rarely deviates from the plan. We agreed that if she were to make changes on the fly, she'd find a way to let me know. Unless... Let's see if there are any clues around here. We can look while we wait for her. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back soon. Okay. There are some books here and a few files. They all look like medical records. Hmm. Advanced nursing. How to raise the spirit of your patients, a quick guide to the psychology of emotions, and the meaning of laughter. These sure are some interesting books. Who knew Sijuin would be interested in these kinds of things? She even has books on understanding people's motivations and feelings. Hmm. Is it because she's a melazine? Or does she have a need to understand her patient's emotional state? Hmm. Seems quite normal to me. These are skills that would come in handy for a nurse from time to time. None of the beds have any signs of having been slept in, except that one over there. That's the one Lynette must have used, right? You said she was pretending to be sick. Mm-hmm. She would have said her migraine was having a particularly bad flare-up. Generally speaking, the head nurse would then ask her to lie down and rest while she left to retrieve the medication. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or the nurse intentionally left it this way. <laughs> ah, this is it! We saw it before! Wait, this thing? It doesn't look like it's been disguised that well. The space behind it is empty. From its size, I don't think it's an entrance that is meant to be taken apart. There's probably a mechanism around here somewhere. Could Lynette have tried to get inside? But if that's the case, she would have contacted me for sure. Hmm. Let's look around here for some more clues. Don't panic, just take another look. A slip of paper? It's right over here, and there's a bunch written on it, too. It reads, Out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card as the medium to pass on my message. You may consider this as me giving you my best regards. This is... Is... is that all? The back! Ah, this... this is... Show me! Now! <sighs> that, that look on your face! P Paimon's reading it now! Would you care to guess where Miss Lynette of the Fatui could be right now? No! Could she have... is she already... Rithesley... Did he... Deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Wait, you mean he was aware of our ghouls from the very beginning? But why? We didn't run into any 
trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since! Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervilet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? <laughs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. This is not like what happened last time. The situation's different now. <laughs> Wait, you're right. Wait, but that means... The fact that Fremenet was able to leave the grounds... Could Risley have let him go as well? But what does he gain by letting Fremenet leave like that? <sighs> so he's challenging me and trying to provoke me, I'm sure of it. We never should have sent out Fremenet. We had to go through all that trouble to find an opening to sneak him around the guards and into the pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. Lenny's getting more and more panicked. We have to calm him down! Don't be like this, Lenny! Fremenet wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child! That was our fault! No. I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. I was the one who failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Risley. Hey, don't be reckless! Traveler, please talk some sense into him! I simply cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back! He's rushed out the door! After him! Hmm. Right. I feel like we still have some room to make changes on these details. It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Whoever's outside is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Are you okay? Ah, oh, these two. As expected, they've already found this place. Oh, they are quite sharp. What a delightful turn of events. I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. I like the feeling of being trusted. Oh my! What's wrong, little one? There's no need to panic. Take a deep breath before you begin. Being able to read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Lenny! Wait! It's no use. We have to catch up to him! He's already out of sight! How is he so fast? Let's go head him off at Risley's office! My flame has been extinguished. Come out and face me, Risley! Hmm. Aren't we at an administrative office space? 
Why don't you at least try to follow even a couple rules from the fortress's indoor management regulations? What did you do to my sister? I ran into the young miss at the infirmary. I'd heard that she was suffering from quite the migraine, so I decided to invite her over for a cup of tea. I do have some teas in my collection that can work wonders against such an illness. Stop joking around! Where did you take my siblings? I have also heard that your performances are quite the spectacle. Miss Lynette would sometimes enter a box filled with water, only to emerge the next second from another place altogether. Maybe she'll appear behind you right now if you were to turn your head. Is he trying to trick me into turning my head? No, he's probably not looking to attack me right now. All of the hostages are in his hands, and he's even in the mood for small talk. That means Lynette is probably still alive. You knew we were investigating the infirmary from the start, so you deliberately aroused the Traveler's suspicions and baited us into continuing our investigation just so that you'd be able to kidnap Lynette. <sighs> As for Fremenay, no, you probably didn't even interfere with Child's escape. You let him go so you could purge the Fatui members that we had planted into your ranks. There was no need to do so. The Fortress of Meripede is a pretty pleasant place. Most people enjoy their lives here. The only ones who act differently are those with personal agendas. It was quite easy to identify your colleagues. You removed our original members and spread the news of Child's escape so Father would assign our team to come down and investigate. Fremenay has also fallen into your hands, right? If you're oh so omnipotent and so in control, why would you need hostages? One correction. Lynette is in my hands right now, but Fremenay is not. He's not? <sighs> what do you really want? Lenny! Oh. Wonderful. Everyone is here, so I'll only need to say this once. Thank you so much for cooperating with me. Meager into the point, I see. Alas, only Miss Lynette is currently having a cup of the fortress's finest tea. Although, as per your original plan, Mr. Fremenet should also have returned to the fortress by now. But he has neither shown up within my gates, nor has he been taken into any kind of custody. So where do you think he may be right now? Wait, you can't mean... You locked him outside in the sea? I closed the fortress's gate to the outside world. That's all. Fremen is a star diver, so he should be fine, right? No, we're still here, so he'd definitely try to find a way to come back for us. So we can't assume he might have made a break for the surface. But why would I do this, you may be asking? To have an audience with you, of course. My intel tells me that Mr. Linney is a great magician, so it's only natural for me to want to have some cards of my own when it comes to negotiating. Besides, I do recall you mentioning to Miss Lynette that you've always wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Lord of the Fortress of Meripede, regardless of whether it was in a personal or a professional capacity. Well, you got your wish. So, you've been keeping tabs on us before we even set foot in the fortress. Some of my folks just happened to hear a thing or two, that's all. In any case, I will be straight with you. I was willing to play dumb and turn a blind eye, so we had a pleasant few days playing games together here. But once you started focusing on the Forbidden Zone, all of that changed. Mr. Linney, the cards are stacked against you right now. Miss Lynette is in my hands, and Mr. Fremenet is still slowly being pickled out there in the brine. You know just as well as I that he cannot last out there forever. You need do but one thing to guarantee their safety. I would like you to contact your superior, and ideally invite her over for a cup of tea with me. You want to see Father? <laughs> but why should she bother giving you an audience? Well... If she cares for the well-being of her dearest children, she should have plenty of motivation to join me for a parent's evening. I've heard that the bonds between the members of the House of the Hearth are like the bonds of family. I don't see why she would refuse. Why did you think Father sent us to handle the Fortress of Meripede? This place is basically a no-man's land. It wouldn't be fitting for anyone as important as a Harbinger like Father to come here in person. Oh, I see. So it's because she doesn't care for my place here. That's such a shame. 
After all, I've amassed quite the tea collection. I was looking forward to sharing it with her. Both Monsieur Nervillette and Lady Farina have already received many samples as gifts. Was this the extent of your master plan to get to father? No matter how much pressure you may put on me, I won't allow you to use us to blackmail her. You people really are difficult to get along with. All I'm asking for is a face-to-face -face conversation. Does she truly have no interest in the fortress's secret? Mr. Linney, you have one last chance to invite your father here. If you refuse... <sighs> Linny! Instead of asking why I'm doing this, why don't you try to see things from my perspective for a second? From the very beginning, the Fatui has been actively infiltrating my fortress. I gave you a warning by cutting off the first few operatives I found, but that only caused you to double down. Had you given up on the fortress then and there, I'd have no reason to want to talk. Mr. Fremenet left the fortress on his own, and Miss Lynette tried to pry out my secrets right in front of me. No matter how you look at it, the responsibility for this falls on you. I... I shouldn't ask Father to do anything because of us. Six. Five. Wait, I... Two. One. Time's up. It really is a shame, Mr. Linney. Risley! Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for my afternoon tea. <laughs> You do realize that I'm only letting you go because of Nervillette, yes? You're here helping him out, and I've already done my best to stay out of your way. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. The fortress may be small and remote, but it still has its own set of laws. Hmm. Then how about this? Those who are capable deserve respect. You've spent quite some time investigating my home turf by now, so why don't you tell me a thing or two about what you found, hmm? I'll ask you three questions. Answer all of them correctly, and I'll agree to your request. Question one. Regarding the hidden rules of the production zone, what is the truth behind the one about not being allowed to work for three days in a row? I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. But what could Sijuin be doing during that time? The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes that only idiots who don't understand the value of coupons will spend them on Fanta. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. It seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. Fanta's internal report suggests that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But the product has to undergo a trial because even Fanta's own employees have a lot of reservations about it. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. As a result, the Melusines have also developed a sense of aesthetics that appears rather strange and alien to humans. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because the Fanta Company sponsored it. The company must want a return on their investment as well.
Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial. The research notes said that the Melazine... According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took... We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just... I've been told that the infirmary is all... The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't... Fanta's internal reports suggest... The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from human... According to Collins, the pan... The Fanta promoter has been struggling because... The Fanta promoter has been struggling. I've been told that the infirmary is... Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're... We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world... Ah, so that's what's going on! Paimon understands it now! Who would have guessed? The hidden rule of the production zone. People are not supposed to work three days in a row, and if they do, they'll get strange meat in their welfare meal. At first we thought this strange meat must have something to do with the people who disappeared, but in reality, they were all prepared by Sijuin, the head nurse. She often visits the production zone to observe the workers' health and makes a note of anyone who has worn themselves out after three full days of work. Out of her sense of duty as the head nurse, as well as her genuine concern for the workers' health, Sijuin visits the cafeteria right before lunch and cooks an extra dish for those who can use the stamina boost. Sijuin has only the best intentions with her surprise gift and doesn't want anyone to find out about what she does. However... Unfortunately, Melusines as a race perceive the world differently from humans and their sense of aesthetics is even more alien to us. The recipients of her lovingly prepared special meals cannot taste the care within and usually just freak out. Are we on the right track? <laughs> Not bad. You've uncovered Sijuin's secret and even guessed her intentions correctly as well. It's nice to know that her efforts have not gone unacknowledged. All right, now for my next question. There are also some hidden rules in the Pancration Ring, including the one that you're not allowed to support both sides of a fight. Why is that? I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just- Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and un- We often see Miss Sijuin observing the pr- The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coup- The research notes said that the melt- According to Collins, the Pancration tournament only took place because the Fanta company sponsored it. 
the Fanta promoter has been struggling because... According to Collins, the Pancration Tur- We often see Miss C- Fanta's internal reports suggest that- Ah! Paimon gets this rule too now! So there really was nothing to be afraid of! That hidden rule of the Pancration Ring is about how, um... People are not supposed to bet on both boxers at the same time. And if they do, they'll receive a package containing a strange, blood-colored liquid. People get scared when they see it because they've subconsciously begun to associate it with the missing boxer. But really, it's just a bottle of the latest yet-to-be-named and packaged new Fanta trial product. A blood-red drink. It's no wonder even Fanta's own staff were questioning the company's decision-making. The company, facing backlash from its own staff, decided to try to trial the product on a smaller scale, to see how it might be received by customers. They came to the Fortress of Meropede and offered to sponsor the Pancration Tournament so they could push their new product. But the Duke completely refused to even entertain the idea. The Duke, knowing how valuable coupons are in the fortress, knew that only total idiots who didn't understand their true value would bother buying a Fanta product here. And so, only those who proved their stupidity by being dumb enough to bet on two opposing sides of the same match were selected to receive the drinks. I acknowledge the effort you've put into bringing the truth of this mystery to light. Although, based on your description, that Fanta promoter is a bit too careless with his words, I may just reconsider my collaboration with the company. All right, and here's the final question. What's the secret behind our head nurse and all of her patients in the infirmary? Stop your cruel and pointless games, Risley! You know that we haven't finished our investigation, so there's no way we can answer the last question. The thought of sparing Lynette and Fremine never even crossed your mind! You'll pay for this! Lenny! <laughs> are you alright? Oh, <laughs> close one. I owe you, Sijuin. That was a fantastic shot. It was nothing, Your Grace. Sijuin? Though this gun may look like a toy, it's actually fully functional, as I just demonstrated. Sijuin... You... <sighs> Not at all. I am merely a resident of the fortress, and thus protecting it is my duty. When Monsieur Nervulet asked me to come here, he told me that my job would be to take care of the well-being of everyone here, I am merely discharging my duties. But if you mean what you just said, then isn't Linny someone you should be looking after as well? Isn't he a resident here just like the rest of us? But I really am just doing what Monsieur Nervulet told me to do. Everything I did, I've done to protect them. Had I not, they would be in far more dire straits right now. His Grace knows it too, right? Your Grace? Mind proving my innocence to them? <sighs> my dear Sijuin, whatever shall I do with you? Would it have killed you to just wait another minute or two? Well, it's nearly time after all. <sighs> the way you do things can be truly frustrating sometimes, Your Grace. I figured I should try to talk some sense into you. What are you talking about? What time? Take me if you want. But let them go. Mm-hmm, how touching. Can you just give me one more minute? Don't be like that, Your Grace. All right, everyone, calm down. Two more visitors will be arriving any time now. I'll go get a cup of tea. Miss Sijuin, I leave Miss Lynette in your care. You... What are you doing? I believe I hear footsteps. Some space, please. 
Ah, Miss Clorand. My door. Fremenade. Fremenade. What's going on? What is Clorand doing here? Work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Linny. The tranquilizing effect will begin to wear off soon. Please take it easy in the meantime, though. What happened to Fremenay? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... like this? A flushed face, an accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. <laughs> What did you say? Uh, please, make some space. I'll need to give Mr. Fremini a more thorough checkup. Your Grace, I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Clorand while you get Fremini to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. How is he? These symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his condition is not critical. Of course, it would be best if he stayed for further observation. Let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. Uh, sorry. I am aware that the infirmary may not be your favorite place in the world at the moment. We do only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenay for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Where is she? How is she right now? Oh, she just took a nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations are correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijuin may have been forced to shoot Mr. Linny again. How's the situation out there? The water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time... Well, you can see how that boy is doing. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Well, I did try to convince him that I had my reasons. Never seems to work, though. It would probably work on Nouvellette. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh, it's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nivellet. Want some tea? Mm, not particularly. If you want to drink some that badly, just say so. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? Uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. Linny, are you okay? <sighs> I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Are you sure? You don't look alright. 
My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but that's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lenny! Oh, Traveler, Paimon, you're here too. Premine? Is he... He'll be fine. But for now, please help me lift him up. His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette, together? On it. Traveler, you seem pretty worried about him. Want to come with us? The Duke and Clarand are gone. They probably went to get some tea. Huh, the Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Clarand will need a break, since she only just returned from rescuing Fremenay out of the sea. Awake! Fremenay, how do you feel? <sighs> Lenny... Lynette... We're all here. Uh, where... am I? The infirmary, at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremenay. And you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? Don't push yourself if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, traveler, Paimon, it's been so long. Uh, the sea, there's something wrong with the seawater. Shh, it's okay. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me, this is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. Pipes... Uh... Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now. <sighs> I'm in. Hmm... Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. It looks abandoned. Where could Master Child be? Huh. This mechanism looks like it's been tampered with. Could he have done it? Thank you. 
getting stuck on something. Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. This is where the water starts. Okay. Master Child probably dived into the water. I'll go take a look as well. Vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces aren't natural. A person must have left them, and recently. I should be going in the right direction. Oh, there are traces here too. I need to keep going. Huh? The traces are gone. But I don't see where he could have gone from here. racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. What's going on? No good. I have to get back. They still don't know anything about what's going on. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. In other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone, but there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that. And... you know the rest. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress, or why she went out to save you. Miss Clarand, you say? I must go thank her in person. 
You're still too weak for Manet. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Cloran will stay here as a guest for another few days, so there's no need to hurry. A guest? Then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Yeah, it's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Liddy? Uh... No, please go on without me. I don't want to leave just yet. Lenny. The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. <sighs> Understood. Then let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The Traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. I take it Mr. Fremenet's condition has stabilized? Of course! I wouldn't have left the infirmary otherwise. I've been expecting those two, but might I inquire as to the purpose of your visit, Miss Sejuin? I wanted to check up on Miss Cloran. How are you feeling? Mostly fine, I think. If you don't mind, I'd like to perform another quick physical exam. It'll just take a few minutes. All right. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll take my leave for now, then. Well, want to explain yourself, Risley? <laughs> of course. But I'm not partial to the word choice of explain. How about enlighten? But where should I begin? How about you start by asking me any questions you have? You can start with whichever one you'd like to get answered the most. Hmm. Then Paimon will begin. Did you know about Lenny's goals from the very beginning? Hmm, no. I just knew they were Fatui operatives sent to the fortress by the Knave. As for their specific goals, I only figured those out as you made progress on your investigation. You managed to monitor and stay ahead of them even though you didn't know what they were trying to do? They came here with ulterior motives. I'm quite adept at discerning what that kind of behavior signals. Initially, I thought their goal was just to investigate Child's disappearance. Linny suggested that I had deliberately let him escape, but in truth, I didn't really do anything special to help or hinder him while he was here. Everything he did, from finding helpers to leaving this place, he did on his own. Of course, it's inevitable that the Knave would make a big deal out of her fellow Harbinger's unexplained disappearance. I'm also quite curious about where that Harbinger went, so I figured I might as well let the Fatui do their own investigative work. All I care about is the answer. So you were hoping Lenny's group would just do your work for you! You make it sound like that's a bad thing. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. I assume that Fremenet has told you already, the ratio of primordial seawater around the fortress of Meripede is on the rise. The Forbidden Zone has always been Linny's target, and you got roped into that investigation after running into him. I began to intervene out of concern for your safety, and also to prevent the fortress from becoming entangled in more irksome matters. Are the rumors true that you're also a former criminal? Why would you put it like that? 
Isn't staying here all day and serving as the manager of the fortress a kind of sentence unto itself? Another form of prison? I just happen to have some support from the rest of the inmates. That's all. Oh, right! Paima wanted to ask, who invited Clarant down here? Me, of course. I paid her good mora to come down to the fortress for some field work. As a champion duelist, Miss Cloran could be considered to be an independent party. I needed to find an exceptionally capable person to help me get through the appending crisis. And saving Fremenet was part of that crisis? You can think of it like that, yes. Credit where credit is due, that boy is quite adept at diving. Had conditions not been as hostile as they were, he probably would have found the missing Harbinger already. That's not something you should be asking after. Nervalette only asked you to investigate Child's whereabouts. All I need to prove to you is that the Forbidden Zone had nothing to do with the Harbinger's disappearance. That should be clear now that you've spoken to Fremenet. But we've already uncovered that there's something wrong with the infirmary, and we've answered a bunch of questions that you threw at us. Isn't it about time that you answer our last question in return? You make a compelling case. Do you really want to know the answer that badly? Yeah, Paimon really wants to know! Even if the truth may not be pleasant? Follow me. Seems you've forgotten just what kind of place the Fortress of Meripede is. Stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret mechanism or... Whoa! This is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. What a huge door! There are three such isolation gates in total. Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name Forbidden Zone. Am I correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little Fatui friends everything? anything from them? <laughs> well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Huh. So there's a switch on the side. Stand back. Go on, have a look. <laughs> I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it but it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. 
We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the primordial sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that, and the symptoms that Fremenet displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of primordial seawater in the seawater nearby. The concentration of... primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea! And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. Yes, that's very likely. But forget about the two of us! Not even Novalet knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find a plug of leak. Oh. Oh! Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues, soon it will no longer be able to hold back the primordial sea at all. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. But that's just... too weird! Why would the Fortress of Meripede be built right above a sluice gate for the Primordial Sea? Who built this place anyway? Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent, and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them, and said, You may go guard my secret, deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just... Thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. It's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. To be frank, not really. 
But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. This is it. Your Grace, perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have... Wait, Jurier, he's not alone! Huh? Lorveen and Jurier? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin? Good. Saves me a bit of time explaining. Edwin's main areas of research were archaeum and gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the Fortress of Meripede? Ah, <sighs> what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> That taskmaster over there is Miss Lorveen, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Ooh, are they together? See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient cover? I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man! If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, I forget I said anything then. Follow me. Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. Let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. What a huge... ship? This is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? I... Uh, not much at all. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in this story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the Primordial Sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. Alright, that's enough talking for now. 
I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. I'll leave you here for now. Oh! I... Uh, thank you so much. No worries. But don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. Yeah, we'll put a lot of thought into it for sure. Great. I look forward to what happens next. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishwin. Yeah. I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah. I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So let's just talk here. Alright, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost Primordial Sea is probably very close to the Fortress of Meripede. Ooh, he's good! He got that right on the first try! That's Arlini. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. Super smart! <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. I can't believe it. Nasi, 
will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. Feel all warm and safe inside. Uh, Paimon. Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh. You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. dinner as well. Huh. You're right. She's actually sitting in the fortress cafeteria. What would you like to eat? Yep, you can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Me too. Don't forget Paimon. No problem. Just leave it to me. Delicious. Is this how it feels to be freeloaders? Wait a second, we did do plenty of work after all. Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. to see you all so happy. Oh, see the expression on your face just now? But the muscle here just moved, which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Sijuin, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? <sighs> A bit of both, I suppose. I'm a melazine, which means I'm very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I 
just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Lene wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Clarand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linney as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervulet would come down here more often, too. I feel like he'd like it here, with all the darkness and chaos. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. Ah, it's you two. How's dinner? It's all right. Miss Sijuan really put in a lot of effort. So we heard that Risley invited you to come down to help, and you saved Fremenade too! You sure work super fast! Oh, it was child's play. Still, Paima didn't know even Champion Duelist could take on side jobs. Oh, and why aren't you eating with Sijuan and the Duke? Won't you get bored eating by yourself? Miss Sijuin was with you. And the Duke has business of his own. Hmm. Actually, didn't Navia say that you went out for dinner with her as well? Yeah. First time in a long time. First time in a long time? So you mean you've gone out to dinner with her in the past? In the past, yes. <clears throat> you seem to be enjoying yourselves here. Things will be getting messy at the fortress soon. Don't run around unnecessarily. She's finally relaxed. <sighs> I'm super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? No time to explain, mate. Goodbye! Uh, hey, wait! What's wrong with these people? They won't even talk to us! 
They're here! Yeah. There you are! Oh, thank goodness! Cristo and Lavaroon, do you know what happened here? We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here. Lavaroon was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed, yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. Yeah, he said to get as far away as possible, upwards and outwards. Oh no, it can't be that thing! Whoa, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke! You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! They're here. Just like I said. We have it! <sighs> You're just in time. But be ready to run. This won't hold it for long. Find Nuvillette. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Uh, then what will happen to you? Until he arrives, we're the last line of defense. <laughs> the gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. <laughs> Traveler, I need you to head to the Opera House immediately. Farina will soon be meeting with the Knave there. You must protect Farina, and make sure she doesn't spend too much time alone with her. Will do. You have my sincerest gratitude. Traveler in Paimon? Monsieur Nervalet has left instructions. Please follow me. 
Though I'm sure he's already explained, this should be a mostly cordial conversation unlikely to give rise to violence. But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. Oh, so you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Of course, of course! How could they not attend a meeting such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave. One of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. I've already prepared seats for you. Come, sit beside me. Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? Traveler, what do you think of this cake? That's good to hear. So what Child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Here's to hoping that he's an excellent swimmer. Uh... Since we're talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked... certainly pretty impressive, yeah. Oh, so you're also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Nuvillette right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas, he just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nuvillette. Hmm. Coming from you, that's not surprising at all. Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier. As you well know, a long time has passed since Child disappeared. Uh... uh well, in any case, there's no need to worry. We know for sure that Child is still alive. Oh, and just how do you know that? Because... Uh... Because we found evidence that proved he left the Fortress of Meripede! And where did he go after leaving the Fortress? Well... The Fortress of Meripede lies deep beneath the waves. Unless he pranced right out of the main gate, he must have had to swim for it. Do you have any proof that he surfaced safely? Ah, oh, that is good news at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too long ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear Tonya, your letter made me feel like we were still enjoying our time in Snezhnaya together. I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the Opera House. 
is it something like that? All letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. Uh, huh? Hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. Hmm. I suppose this is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Huh? Uh, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? <sighs> My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. Hmm? Sure you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. Nah, who knows. Maybe it's just your sense of responsibility. <laughs> hmm. Sounds about right. Day may come when the prophecy is fulfilled and the waters burst forth, but it is not this day. This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. <laughs> Forgive me for overruling it. All right. Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> Indeed. But only for now. <laughs> I win this bet. You owe me a present. <sighs> Very well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearance's sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? Tea? Hmm. He already has tons of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? Well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <clears throat> that was obviously a joke. Uh, anyway, you've still got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Palais Marmonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. <sighs> I must say, we've spent long enough playing house. Miss Farina. As the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? 
At this point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet, here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Hearth have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you? It beggars believe just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures! I am not alone in my doubts, you know. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us? How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways, and I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me! Fontaine will be saved. Even... even if I still cannot see the true future right now, as long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high! Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it and what is it doing to help? I... My machinations are just like the prophecy itself. They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as, your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? Uh... An emergency response plan? Oh, that look in your eyes. Have you not even prepared one of those? The... the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. Then allow me to jog your memory. Miss Farina, what is the purpose of your oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of indemnitium that has accumulated over the years? The oratrice? It, it's just like it appears to be. Hmm. So you also have no idea. If I'm not mistaken, someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. You see, even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnitium. But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Eudex Nouvellet is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Please keep it a secret for me. Of course I will. Although, I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Eudex by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please, 
Help yourselves, everyone. Traveler, I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank you. Paimon will take you up on that offer. Oh, Paimon's super full. That cake was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it's on my tea table, it must be of the highest quality. Uh, yes, and we must thank the Nay for bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table. And I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Mm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. We'll end it here. Mind seeing me off, Traveler? We could use the opportunity to discuss Child before I must be on my way. I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. That's what Paimon thought! You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth, as their father. I would like to express my gratitude. That was all. Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings, and informal topics in informal settings. I know you just returned from the fortress of Meripede. Relax, I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet are still there, and I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them. Especially Linny. You mean Ridesley. He's a tricky one to deal with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that Linny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others. Including me. By the way, and you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? You are outside of our disputes, and the freest person in all of Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty and immediately transported to the Fortress of Meropede. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? I... I... Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be meeting someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Farina, the Hydro Archon. She is at the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that... She often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Oh? Come over here, you little critter, you! You dare to run from me? Stop right this instant! 
My goal is just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. But no one will blame someone for taking the bait. After all, from the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. <laughs> it's just as I guessed in the second before I struck. The Hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? And, and what are you trying to do? Please, don't kill me! I'm begging you, please! The fear in her pupils is genuine, so perhaps she's not bait after all. Either way, targeting her has lost all meaning. Hmm. I left the scene with ease. Nobody came looking for me, and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of Fosalor. I suspect even Farina dares not mention this incident to anyone. Not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Farina quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep that night, nor could she even bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Eudex Nuvulette is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nuvulette hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, Father. My dear children, please speak. News from the Fortress of Meripede. Master... Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the Fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the handiwork of that Ridesley. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a Harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Eudex Nuvillette. Oh, and I have an additional mission for you three. Yes, Father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Eudex Nuvillette. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the Fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. You should know the rest. Linny's group is quite close to you, so they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. You attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. Uh, alright then. I've now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Eudex Nuvillette must be the Hydro Archon, but now, that doesn't seem right to me either. I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Eudex Nuvillette or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. Of course, that is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land of my birth. Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? 
A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontanians will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the need arise, I would be happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve, and as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure we will work together someday. He certainly returned quickly. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. Hmm. Nevelette, is it over? For now, yes. But this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesied events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. Hmm. To put it simply, I used my power to force back the Primordial Sea and reseal the Sluice Gate. Hmm. So as expected, the Knave has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out, though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Permission granted. Whoa. It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. You... can't... tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. I believe so. The fortress has a long and complex history. It has seen much grief and suffering. Hmm. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? You may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh? And what are you thinking? The... Dragon... of... Uh, what? Huh? Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? My apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... <sighs> you guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. There's still something Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please, go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you are able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living Dragon Sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full Dragonhood. They say that when the first Usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are seven elemental Archons and seven matching dragon sovereigns. The dragon sovereign of water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, 
I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have some urgent matters to attend to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. We'll see you another time. Take care. Now guess, what suit will this next card be? Uh... A bare teeth cat? Well, well, look who it is. Traveler, Paimon! Huh. Hello, everyone. Looks like you're recovering nicely, Fremine. Mm-hmm. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, right. I... I managed to work up the courage to thank Miss Clorand in person. Whoa, how did she react? Uh... She told me that it was nothing. It was as if saving a life wasn't a big deal to her at all. She also told me not to worry about it. She didn't want to stress you out, that's all. She's right, and it's best not to dwell on it. Yeah... Okay, but check this out! We went back to the Opera House, and we met the Knave! You met Father? Did she say anything to you? She said a few things that were... uh... a bit hard to understand. And also that she's looking forward to working with us in the future. Her attitude towards you is even better than what we'd imagined! <laughs> That's fantastic! You should believe her. She has her own way of doing things, and she'll do everything in her power to help those she considers close, which now might also include you. Mm-hmm. Father is very capable, and also trustworthy. Oh, Paimon just remembered that she thought Linny was a bit too proud as well. She said that you should learn how to rely on others sometimes. Uh, got it. Huh. That does sound like something that Father would say. Hey! Are you going to stay here for the next few days? Looks like it, yeah! Excellent! I will host a tea party. For real? Then Paimo wants another serving of cake! Another implies that you were already served some delicious cake while you were up there. Hmm, how lovely. Well, next time, you're going to have tea and snacks with us. for the time being. 
Of course. We must also thank you for the help you provided. How did Nervalette know that he was needed here? Miss Sure Nervulette has strong resonance with the hydro element. When the water level rises, he can feel the waves produced. I ran into the bombshell bros while bandaging the injuries of the wounded. They were mumbling the whole time about how you just ran down without a word. I'm so relieved to see that you're both alright. If you're not too pressed for time, please stay with us a few more days. Just let me know if you get a craving for any particular dish, so I can have Mr. Wolsey get your meals prepared. Oh, and please feel free to visit the infirmary for a break at any time. I'd like to take the opportunity to spend some more time observing your facial muscles as well. Your happy smiles are quite contagious, you know. They're so memorable, and I've missed them immensely while you were gone. You... you guys are back? Crystal! Maroon! You guys didn't get caught and thrown back down here, right? Huh? No, not at all! Ah, and here I thought you'd managed to escape from jail during all the commotion. I'd held you up as legendary jailbreakers, but now you're telling me... You just... never left? Uh, <laughs> we're sorry, but we just some business to take care of. All right, all right. There's no need to get caught up in the details. We're just relieved to see you. He was super worried about you, you know. <laughs> hey, it wasn't just me. Weren't you super worried as well? Uh, something like that, yeah. I was also transferred to work in the kitchen a few days ago. I can still hear Quisto mumbling to the carrots. Are those two all right? Do you think they made it out alive? Whenever he'd say that, I tell them I'm sure they're fine. Wherever they are, they're kicking back with drinks in hand, enjoying the lovely scenery. Hey, there's nothing wrong with worrying about your prison pals, is there? I mean, considering how they always love listening to all my gossip. These two, they sure are a lot warmer and friendlier than when Paimon first met them. Ah, oh, well, if you say so. I'll be watching you to make sure you finish every last bite. Sijuin told me you still haven't eaten. Yeah, I was working on something, so I forgot. Uh, that's no excuse for... Huh? What's you two? Yeah, you're Lurveen! We're back! Hello there. It's been quite the mess here recently. How have you been? And you! Are you still taking the secret passageway from the infirmary to work on the ship? Yep. That is still top secret, though, so don't say a word to anyone. It can be a bit annoying when there are lots of people in the infirmary, but I still prefer taking that route over the one from the Duke's office. I mean, the infirmary does make it easier for you to slack off. Oh <laughs> yeah? Then why are you also here so much? You two really are just using your jobs as a cover for your relationship, aren't you? Not at all! Do my eyes deceive me, or did I just see two inmates come back after making it to the surface? Some strange winds blowing of late. We wanted to see how the fortress is doing. Is everything still alright? 
We're fine, for the most part. Nervalette came down and took care of the worst of it. If that's the case, why don't you just ask him to stay here? Oh, yeah, what a brilliant plan. Let's go convince the Udex himself to exchange the Quartz of Fontaine for a puddle of water in the middle of nowhere. He came here in a hurry and left without even stopping for a cup of tea. He did remember to take Miss Sijuin's gift with him, though. He sure sounds super busy. Miss Cloran has left as well. She also took her gift from Miss Sijuin. Were the gifts milkshakes? Nervalette got the milkshake. Cloran received lipstick instead. Ugh, those aren't even remotely alike. Well, it's Nervalette's own fault for making Sijuin worried about his health by working so much. But besides that, our head nurse is still pretty fond of picking out beauty products for the ladies. Oh, and I have some gifts here for you as well. Are these from Sijuin too? Nope, they're from yours truly. You've already wrapped up your work at the fortress, so you can return to the surface at any time. You haven't yet served your full prison term, however, so you may continue to use your cell until your term is up. For real? Then we could stay here for a really long time? You may access the cafeteria for free. Hooray! Just remember to come complete your paperwork once it's time for your release. or stop meeting new friends. There are so many bad things in the world, and we're just two people, but we've still been solving problems no matter where we go. Isn't that pretty cool? You're counting Paimon today? Aren't you the only adventurer here? Then let's ask Catherine to give Paimon an adventurer handbook as well. Paimon will also be an adventurer from today forward. Ah, I just got thoughts making Paimon giddy. Ah, oh, Paimon's gonna crash, so you sleep soon too. The last time we fell asleep here, we woke up to a whole mess outside our cell. The primordial seawater nearly rose up. That was so scary. We should be safe now, right? Alright then, good night to you, traveler.
Wait, did, uh, did I hear that right? Monsieur Nervalet, are you sure you'd like to take over the case yourself? That's right. Oh, but why? Technically speaking, cases like this are better left to the guards. Nervalet, Sadine, hey there! What are you two talking about? Ugh, Traveler and Paimon, please help me talk our Chief Justice out of this. He wants to investigate a case on his own. No, this is completely unprecedented. How can we have the Udex acting like a private detective? Hmm? I trust that you'd be able to work that out with how well connected you are. But I must apologize. I do not plan on relying on anyone else's help for this matter. So, what is it exactly? It sure sounds serious if it's something you've got to investigate personally. A Meluzi named Kiara received a threat letter. And then? That is all the information I have acquired at this stage. Huh? Uh, I have no idea why you're so hung up over this. I've checked the schedule in advance and it seems like there aren't any trials today. So, if you insist, uh, I have no objections. Thank you for understanding. I will leave a note explaining my absence on my desk. I would appreciate it if you could take it to Lady Farina. She may have no interest in official affairs, but standard procedure dictates that I'm still responsible for reporting to her. Yes, yes. Understood. I'll come back later and deliver the note to her. Judging from Sadine's reaction, it must be pretty rare for you to investigate stuff personally. What's so special about this case? I cannot tell you just yet, but it reminded me of certain past events. There could be complicated conflicts of interest behind all this, so I must eliminate all risks in advance. Come on! Stop being so secretive! We still have no idea what's going on! It is not my intention to keep you in the dark, but I need some time to revisit those memories and collect my thoughts. Long story short, a little more than 400 years ago I became the Udex of Fontaine and initiated a series of institutional reforms. There were few people I could trust, but I had two subordinates who were exceptionally trustworthy and capable. Carol, a Melusine, and Vautrin, leader of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. They must have been amazing people to receive such high praise from you! Indeed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to protect them. The reforms damaged the interests of some and the more conservative faction took advantage of Carol's identity to instigate political unrest. Ultimately, they wanted me to yield more of my power. The incident resulted in Carol taking her own life, and Vautrin being exiled. From then on, I've been especially careful when dealing with cases related to Melusines. All Melusines used to live a secluded life away from human society. I granted their wishes when some of them, including Carol, asked me to bring them to the court of Fontaine. Many common folk believe that I share a special bond with the Melusines, and whatever they do can be traced back to me. Some of them, especially those who hold a grudge against me, exploit that belief and stir up conflict over Melusines in an attempt to lay the blame on me. I have nothing against the opinions of others, but the moment a whirlpool of conspiracy forms, it inevitably affects the innocent. It has already happened once, and I want to make sure it does not happen again. Um, even so, why do you have to be the one investigating? There's the guards, the Mari Chausse Phantom, and the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Aren't they more than enough to figure out what's going on? Based on prior experience, there is a high chance that those who hold hostility towards me do not belong to the same department. The political system of Fontaine is relatively complex and involves the interests of multiple different factions. However, since I am technically an outsider in Fontaine, 
A lot of trouble could be avoided if I personally took on the case. Outsider? But aren't you the Chief Justice of Fontaine? Why would you be an outsider? I understand where you are coming from, but there is not necessarily a connection between my responsibilities and how I perceive myself. You know very well about my true identity, and have even met others of my kind in other nations. Even though I was born with a human form, there is a fundamental difference between dragons and humans. Taking on the role of Chief Justice does not make me a part of this community. In fact, the status I was granted has prevented me from forming deeper bonds with others. I have lived in Fontaine for a long time, but I do not belong here. That is why I call myself an outsider, a fish out of water. Yeah, we have nothing to do with all those organizations anyway, so how about we come with you on your investigation? Let's team up and round up all the bad guys lurking in the dark. Hmm, that does not sound like a bad idea. I rarely investigate cases on my own, but with professionals like you around, I'm sure it will go a lot smoother. Oh, <laughs> I'm starting to get a little embarrassed. Just leave it to us! I will write my note of absence right away. Let us depart together once I'm done. Let us go. We should visit Kiara first and try to gain a better understanding of the situation. Um, so Nuvalet feels like he doesn't truly belong here in Fontaine, but is that really true? Paimon feels like he has a kind of skewed perspective on a lot of things. Anyway, let's catch up with him first. Water, right? But since you're the Hydro Dragon, would a dragon out of water suit you better? Excellent. Thank you for your suggestion. I will consider using the more accurate term in private occasions. Please allow me to rephrase. Has a dragon out of water? Ugh. That sounds kind of weird. Let's stick with the previous version instead. I never thought I'd see him here. <sighs> the weather's amazing today. Kiara. Huh? Monsieur Nouvellet! And you are? Remember, you're the Traveler and Paimon. I've heard about you. Aww, she's adorable! Hey there, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Is there anything I can do for you? I heard from Sedine that you received a threatening letter. A threatening letter? Oh, right! I remember now. The letter fell through the crack in my door as I was heading out this morning. It said something about catching me, so I thought someone wanted to play hide-and-seek. But Sidine told me it was a threatening letter, and that I could be in danger. But that's not gonna happen with everyone looking after me, right? Have you run into any suspicious-looking people recently? Suspicious-looking people? What counts as suspicious? Did you think of something? Nope. I don't remember meeting anyone like that. Do you still have the letter with you? I want you to show me what it says. Oh! Uh, let's see. Found it! Hmm. 
Now then, <clears throat> get lost. If you don't leave the Mare Chaussee Phantom, I will come and catch you in person. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hmm. A simple threat. Neither the handwriting nor the content itself reveals anything about the writer's intentions. We can't rule out that possibility. Since you can't think of anyone suspicious, I will be heading back to the Palais Memonia to review some official documents. Kiara, you should come with us. It's safer if you stay close by. Sure! Uh, wait, no, no, no. I, I still have a case to work on. I promised Ailoff that I'd check on her place later. But you are being watched right now. Going off on your own could be dangerous. And that's where we come in to help! We'll stay with Kiara and make sure she's safe. With us around, anyone scheming to hurt Kiara can forget about it! Thank you, Traveler. Big sis, Paimon. Uh... Oh... Uh, ahem... Don't worry, your big sis, Paimon, is super strong! All right. Let us go our separate ways for now. Please take care of Kiara. We'll take her to a lost place right away! See you around! So, Kiara, how old are you? Hmm, let me think. One, two, ten? Uh, I can't remember. But I remember coming to the Court of Fontaine with Carolyn Nuvillette. That must have been a long time ago. Carol? Did Nervalet mention her just now? That was more than 400 years ago! Why would Paimon be a big sister to you? My memory isn't that good. But Carol told me I could address others based on how I feel about them. Paimon feels a lot more grown up than me, so you're a big sis. Huh. Paimon sees. Uh... Hey, Traveler, did you hear that? Strange. Paimon felt like someone was following us. Hey, Laugh! Kiara, you're here. Huh? Wait, aren't these two... Oh, they're the Traveler and Big Sis Paimon. I thought so. What brings you here? Did you run into any trouble? Ah, it's not really trouble anymore with us around. May I begin inspecting the store as planned? Of course. Go ahead. Hmm. No hazards detected. You've cleared the inspection. Seems like the criminal from that case last month never set foot in here at all. That was quick. What were you inspecting? I took a look around the shop. Navilet says that us Melazines have special eyes that can see things people can't. Things like blood stains. No matter how hard you try to clean them up, we Melazines can see their residual stains for some time. Pretty cool, huh? All right, all right. Now that you're done inspecting, can we have a chat? Hear me out. I'm planning to release an outfit for children next month and wanted to hire you as my model. Is that okay with you? Of course! Is there anything I need to do? Please wait a moment while I take your measurements. This sample should be a perfect fit. Seems like they get along really well. Huh? What are you looking at? Is there really someone watching us? Shh! Let's sneak over and take a look. Strange? Why isn't he back yet? Gotcha! Charlotte, what are you doing here? Oh, wait, don't tell Paimon you're the one who sent Kiara that threatening letter. 
But you don't seem like the type to... Threat letter? What threat letter? Uh, this is starting to feel like an interrogation. Okay, I'll be straight with you. I don't know the slightest thing about that threat letter you mentioned. I only wanted to follow Monsieur Nouvellet and request an interview with him. You want to interview him? That's right. I'm not the only one, you know. Interviewing him is every journalist's dream. But it's not an easy task to accomplish. The Palais Mermonia rarely accepts appointment requests from us, and we never have the chance to interrupt when the court's in session. So imagine how surprised I was seeing him out on the streets today. It seemed like you were investigating something too. The perfect opportunity to whip up an exclusive, don't you think? Of course, I'll make sure to turn in my manuscript to him for review. I have my principles, and I'd never publish an article without the consent of all parties involved. Yeah, we're doing a secret investigation that can't be made public knowledge. I see. Well, if you say so, I guess I'll put this matter aside for now. Oh, what a shame. Chances like this don't come by very often, you know. In exchange, could you tell me what the threat letter is about? I swear I won't tell. All right, then. What? Someone's targeting a cute little melazine! Shh, not so loud! It just so happens that I did an interview with Kiara. Last month, in fact. It was well received by our readers, so I was planning to continue the series. And now someone's coming after her? I'll ask my colleagues about it. Who knows? We might find something. And don't worry, I know what I'm doing. This secret's safe with me. But I gotta warn you, even if I keep my lips sealed, others will know eventually. Why? People care a great deal about Monsieur Nouvellet's each and every move. Some may have already realized that something was up. Besides, the case involves melazines, so... Anyway, I'll get going now. Watch yourselves, all right? Well, that was a nice chat. <clears throat> Let's head back and check on Kiara. What do you think? The design looks pretty good, huh? I think it's great! Huh. It's very pretty indeed. Clarad! What are you doing here? It seems that you just showed up out of nowhere! As I passed by the Palais Mermonia, I heard that Nouvellet was investigating a case with you. Technically speaking, he and I are under an employer-employee relationship. It didn't feel right to have my employer personally take on such trivial cases. I happened to have some time at the moment, and came to take a look. I sometimes have my clothes custom-made at this boutique, in any case, so we always have a lot to talk about. Ah, oh, Nervalette sure is lucky to have someone like you! Leave this to me. You should go meet up with Nervalette. Okay then, we'll leave Kiara in your hands! <sighs> Come on, let's go find Nervalette! Oh, you're back. Is everything all right? That is good to hear. I trust her abilities. It looks like Kiara is in good hands. We thought so too! Well, did you find any leads? I've been looking over the case records. Specifically, inspection reports submitted by Kiara and major cases I've judged over the past decade. I've come up with two plans. On one hand, I could start with Kiara and track down the group behind all this step by step. On the other, 
I could also analyze the conflicting interests of these major cases and confirm my suspicions if there is indeed a mysterious group that bears a grudge against me. Hmm. They both sound like pretty solid plans, but can you really finish browsing through all these documents? That's a lot of reading even for Paimon. Don't worry. I'm a fast reader when it comes to official documents. After all, I have several hundred years of reviewing under my belt. We'll help you read through them. We have nothing else to do. Thank you. I will continue looking through the ones piled up on the desk, but feel free to browse through anything else in this room. Have you made any progress? We skipped through some of them, but there wasn't anything useful. Oh, there are so many documents lying around. Just how many cases have you handled? I would love to answer that question, but the truth is I've never made a precise calculation myself. If memory serves me right, there should be at least 100,000 cases. The documents you see are just a small fraction of what's really there. Whoa! That's... a lot! Looks like the work of a Chief Justice isn't easy at all! That might be how it seems from another's perspective, but trials and official duties are, to me, simply routine. There are many documents here. Take a break if you are tired. Ah, <sighs> you read Paimon's mind. All right. Let us take a break then. Please pardon my lack of consideration. People rarely come to the Palais Memonia for matters outside of work. To be quite honest, I am not sure what we should do. Would you like to have some drinks, perhaps? You must be thirsty after all that work. Ooh, drinks! Thank you! Hmm. Paima wonders what Novelette likes to drink. Oh, maybe he's a fan of really fancy wines. He seems like the type of person who'd own an entire winery. You know, like D. Luke. Uh, what's inside these glasses? It looks just like water. 
An astute observation. It is indeed water. So it's just plain old water? What did you think it was? Um, since you're the chief justice in all, Paimon thought you'd prefer something more sophisticated. This water is indeed very special. It would not be an overstatement to call it sophisticated. Huh? I believe you've already tried Fanta. In fact, there are many other drink factories in Fontaine, including those that specialize in packaging pure drinking water. Said water is sourced from all across Tibet, including Mondstadt's Cider Lake, Liu's Chintsa Village, and Inazuma's Konda Village. Here is one of their latest products. Water from Sumeru's Apam Woods. If I were to comment on their mouthfeel... Hmm, the waters of Cider Lake warm the heart. The waters of Chintsa Village have a poignant touch. While one might call the waters of Konda Village... Uh, placid. Distinct differences exist between the waters of each area. You will appreciate their intricacies once you taste them carefully. Really? Let Paimon try! What do you think? Uh... Nope. Paimon couldn't taste any difference at all. Isn't this just normal water? <laughs> How regrettable. It seems like you still have a long way to go in refining your tastes. Hey, this doesn't have to do with refining our tastes. Paimon's pretty sure most ordinary people can't tell the difference. How did you do it anyway? Oh, could it be because you're the Hydro Dragon? Uh, we are allowed to bring that up, right? Since no one else is around? Oh, Paimon's been wanting to ask this for ages. If you're the Hydro Dragon, why would you become Chief Justice in human society? Hmm... Uh, sorry. Paimon was just curious. You don't have to answer. There's nothing to hide. I was simply organizing my thoughts. I accepted this position because I wanted to seek out answers to questions that have perplexed me. Questions? Figure out? Many, in fact. But the one question that puzzles me the most concerns my own existence. In essence, I neither know why I was born in this form, nor do I understand where my long life should take me. I lost many memories from the moment I was born. The Primordial Sea, for example. I can only vaguely recall its connection to me, but I am unaware of what that connection is exactly. Perhaps the elemental dragons of other nations may have some form of an answer. However, they are scattered across all of Tevat. Abruptly visiting could very well pose an unpredictable risk. True. Some of them have very... unique personalities, too. I have been holding on to these unanswered questions for a long time. But there is one thing I've discovered along the way. My emotions easily resonate with those of others. Even I don't have the slightest idea what they mean. My guess would be that there are at least some similarities between humans and myself. By observing their behavior, perhaps I could one day understand the meaning of my existence. Have you made any progress then? Perhaps, but I find such progress difficult to describe. As an outsider, chances to engage in meaningful interactions with others are few and far between. That's why I'm quite thankful for this chat. Such opportunities are rare. <sighs> Alas, time is limited. We should move on with our investigation. Are we gonna continue reading these documents? Uh, Paimon's getting dizzy already. I wasn't able to find any leads even after browsing through most of the documents. But while we were on the topic of water a moment ago, another idea came to me. Water? Do you mean... That's right. 
The fountain of Lucina is where all of Fontaine's waters converge. It is the vessel of countless memories and emotions. If there really were an organization attempting to use Melusines against me, they should also hold an intense resentment towards me. Perhaps we'll be able to find some new leads by sensing the hydro element within the fountain. Huh. Why didn't Paimon think of that? Come on, let's go take a look! Perhaps we should go. There shouldn't be too many people near the Fountain of Lucene during the evening. Monsieur Nervillette? I probably shouldn't disturb them. Looks like we got lucky today. There's hardly anyone around. Uh, what should we do next? Oh, Traveler, can you still hear the voices from the fountain? Perhaps leave the investigation to me. I need you to take a few steps back and keep a safe distance. A safe distance? Nevelette, what exactly are you- Oh, it's glowing! I understand your excitement, but there's no need to thank me. Although I have responded to your wishes, it was not without personal interest. Melusine's special sight make them especially suited for joining the Mare Chaussée Phantom. I'm certain you'll become an indispensable part of Fontaine's detective force. I know, but I'm really glad to be of help. Not only can I repay you for your kindness, but also... It feels like my life has become a lot more meaningful. But a meaningful life also comes with its risks. It's definitely the safest to just stay in the village. But I want to see the outside world nonetheless. In truth, I've never really understood the purpose of my existence. Or what I'm capable of contributing to this world. For almost 20 years, We've stayed in our village without finding any answers. That's why we wanted to leave our village and look for the meaning of our existence elsewhere. <sighs> I understand your confusion. In fact, I feel the same way. I too came here for an answer to my questions about my own existence. Really? Could you tell us what we should do to fit in as you did? The truth is, many people threw rocks at us today and told us to go back to our village. It hurt a lot when they hit me in the head, and I tried really hard not to cry. Logically speaking, both time and effort are essential when different species attempt to peacefully coexist. It will be a difficult road ahead, with countless obstacles to overcome. Different identities and ways of thinking all contribute to strengthening the barrier between one another. Removing it will be no easy feat. There aren't many suggestions I can share, because just like you, I haven't fully integrated into this society. Despite my social status, I am still an outsider. Oh, I see. Let's all do our best, then. 
I'm confident that we'll find the meaning of our existence one day. I believe in you, but you shouldn't lose sight of the difficulties ahead. If you run into any trouble, I suggest that you inform Votram, the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Huh? Is he the person I met in the Palais Marmonia earlier? Yes. Do you have any concerns? That stone-faced human. He didn't even bother to look at me when I tried talking to him. It felt like he wasn't interested in anything but work. He is an earnest man. There will be plenty of opportunities to work together in the future, so please try to get along. But no need. Oh. Hello! I'm Carol! A Melazine! Is there anything you need help with? Get away from here! I'm calling the guards! Please, calm down. I don't mean to cause any harm. Hmm, hard to say. Yeah, we should probably stay away from these monsters. Haven't you realized? Strange incidents have been increasing ever since they came. Why should we trust this species from who knows where anyway? I can't believe Nervilat allowed them into the court of Fontaine just like that. Exactly. That so-called Chief Justice even granted them official positions. Not only that, but they're now responsible for investigating cases as well. I swear, there's some hidden agenda at play here. Go away! Quit acting innocent! I'm not leaving! I won't let you say bad stuff about him! We joined the Mari Chaussee Phantom and solved lots and lots of cases! We've never done anything wrong! Solving cases? With Nervilet in cahoots with you! You could have fabricated it all, and no one would know! So tell me, how can you guarantee that you Melazines aren't involved in anything that occurred recently? Uh, I... Didn't I tell you before? Don't go advertising if you're not a good talker. Votre? Aside from spreading unjustified rumors, if you continue insulting members of the Mare Chaussee Phantom, the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol has every right to subject you to interrogation. There have indeed been an increase in cases recently, perhaps due to the shifting currents of conspiracy and I understand your concern. However, there's been no evidence pointing towards Melazines being involved. <laughs> Even the captain of the security patrol is on their side. Nervilet's newly reformed police force is already corrupt to the core. How can two completely different species possibly coexist? You heard that? Yeah. I don't understand. Why won't anyone believe us? There have been rumors saying that you were born from calamity, and that you inherently bring danger to those around you. There are countless negative rumors about you floating around in Fontaine. It's near impossible for you to become a part of this society. Best if you give up before it's too late. Monsieur Nervalette said that we needed to put both time and effort in. I don't know how long it'll take, but I can at least try making my best effort. I still want to try a little harder. Thank you for bailing me out earlier. <sighs> okay, I won't be taking any more of your time. I painted a lot of flyers last night, so I have to stay and hand them out to everyone. Give them to me. You're... You're not gonna take them away, right? We'll hand them out together. The faster we get this done, the sooner we can head back. Soon, 
Chevalet. What's this? Medals of Peace, awarded to you and Vautrin. Thank you for your continued dedication in the past five years. You've taken one small step forward in helping Melusines gain the trust of humans. I think I'll pass. Hey, don't say that! We wouldn't have made it this far without you! It won't be long before Melusines begin living peacefully with the humans! Just the thought of it makes me happy. Don't keep your hopes up. We've barely scratched the surface. There's still a long way to go before that dream of yours comes true. Though Tran brings up a good point. The trust humans have placed in you is still very fragile. Any small incident could undermine the hard work you've put in. Please be on your guard for the next few days. Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Medal of Peace? <laughs> peace isn't going to give us back what's rightfully ours. Are you sure we should do this? We're no match for Nervalette, even with all our powers combined. What if... Nah, not gonna happen. As long as he remains in his position, there's no chance he'd take us out personally. There are rules even he must comply with in the political sphere. Unless he wants to become an enemy of Fontaine. So quit worrying and just go ahead with it. I've already planned out the murder. Once we lay the blame on the Melazines as the person who brought them to the court of Fontaine, Nervy Lett will be left with no excuse. I guess you're right. Ugh. If he just left things the way they were, it never would have come to this. But he's forced our hand. Time to teach him a lesson. Turn the murderer in! Melazines can't be trusted! That goes for Nervalette, too! Peaceful coexistence? What a joke! Get out of the court of Fontaine and don't ever come back! The results of the investigation are in, Captain Voltra. Go on. There is no direct evidence, but reasonable inference indicates that the ones controlling the situation are supporters of the old regime, whose interests have been undermined by the reform. They tricked Miss Carroll into going to the crime scene and pressed charges against her. After that, they incited panic among the people in order to make Monsieur Nervillette confess to his mistakes and yield up power. The guards were stopped by the enraged mob and couldn't intervene in time. Miss Carol chose to sacrifice herself to pacify the situation. And she called me a blockhead. A little investigation would have cleared things up. Why didn't she wait until we'd established the truth? She didn't have to prove her innocence like that. The situation had rapidly escalated to a physical altercation between infuriated citizens and the guards. Miss Carol might have thought there was no better plan. That is indeed something she'd do. Captain Voltra, should I present these results to Monsieur Nervillette right away? There's no need. Notify the guards to restrict public access to all information. Restrict access to... Wait, are you planning to... There's something I've never told Carol. I had a little sister named Delaria who passed away when I was very young. She's just like Carol in every possible way. Innocent, kind, always believing the best of people. People like her are the most vulnerable to deception and betrayal. From the moment I met Carol, I knew that she'd be easily manipulated by others. I kept a cold demeanor and tried lecturing her into giving up. Looks like she was unfazed by that. Yes. In fact, 
Some of her spirit must have rubbed off on me instead. Because I too began working towards that pie-in-the-sky dream of hers. I should have known. Those cowards don't have the guts to confront New Villette. They even avoided causing trouble for me. They were after Carol all along. Can you understand how I feel? Right now, there's only one thought on my mind. Only through bloodshed can their debt be repaid. I understand, but I'm certain Monsieur Nervalet wouldn't accept that as a solution. That's exactly why we need to keep this a secret. Give me the list of suspects. What happens after this has nothing to do with any of you. I will take responsibility for everything. Did you know? They're hearing a major case today, and the criminal is Captain Vautrin of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Apparently, he resorted to personal measures to seek revenge for Carol and settled the score with the group that framed his friend. <sighs> hey, why aren't you saying anything? I'm thinking... We should try our best to bail him out when the trial commences. Bail him out? Why? Shh, keep it down! Haven't you realized? Both Votran and Carol are Nervilet's most trusted subordinates. After everything that happened to Carol, Nervilet's guaranteed to do everything he can to keep Votran around. Besides, now that the old regime has been uprooted, Nervilet's status is secure as can be. As long as we redirect public opinion, Nervilet will be able to give Votran a reprieve. The benefits are endless. Votran sought vengeance for his friend for a valid cause. This represents the justice he upholds! Please, think about it. If the same thing had happened to you, wouldn't you feel the same way he did? Yeah, that's right! This whole thing started because of those despicable cowards who levied false accusations against Carol. How could Vautran be declared guilty for seeking revenge? Monsieur Nouvellet. Mr. Vautran is innocent! He's, He's innocent! innocent. Order! <sighs> I acknowledge your arguments. For Tran, your revenge could be seen as a form of justice. I understand your decision. Which is why I cannot help but feel regret and even grief about the judgment I must now impose. Personal justice does not equate to justice as defined by the law. To execute your plan for revenge, you abused your authority and conducted informal executions. Your actions have thus violated the law. Therefore, you will be declared guilty. What? That can't be! Monsieur Nervilet, please give this a little more thought. He has done so much for Fontaine. Votran, my friend. Is there anything else you want to say? Nivillet, what have I done to deserve this? I've closely followed every one of your orders. Can't you see? Everyone in this room believes that I'm innocent. Why can't you just let me off? Is this what justice means to you? Answer me, Nivillet! Order. Since there have been no further objections, the Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vautran. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Vautran will be declared guilty. Goodbye, Monsieur Nouvellet. This all happened because of Carol's naive ideas. How can different species peacefully coexist anyway? Hey! Stop spacing out! What's wrong? Are you not feeling well? 
Apologies, it seems like my memories got the better of me. I tried my best to suppress the power of Hydro within myself, but it seems like it still caused the emotions within the Fountain of Lucene to boil over. Due to my negligence, the overflow of emotions and memories must have affected you as well. Are you all right? Wow. The Hydro Dragon is more powerful than Paimon thought. Anyways, the last time we came here, the Traveler only heard voices from the Fountain of Lucene. No emotions boiling over or anything. It is as you said. This might be because I am different. It is not only the Fountain. I can sense emotions from all waters in Fontaine. Rivers, lakes, and even the rain. That sounds awesome! But I rarely ever do anything like this. Emotions carried by water are always chaotic and disconnected. As an outsider, having my mind occupied with irrelevant memories isn't exactly a pleasant experience. Which ones? <laughs> it's fine. I prefer not to speak of those memories. That does not mean I am deliberately hiding them. It was a coincidence, but perhaps it is a good thing that you saw everything in that form. You should now understand why I believe there to be a conspiracy behind all this. These two cases are much too similar. I felt like I needed to do something. Uh, Paimon's starting to lose track of what you're saying. Don't leave Paimon out of the conversation. Paimon wants to help too. Then let us get back to the point. While I was investigating the fountain, I discovered something strange. I did not sense too much hatred towards me within its accumulated emotions. However, I did find some resentment directed towards Kiara. If I remember correctly, it seemed to be related to a smuggling case. I don't know what caused this to happen, but it seems like there won't be a shortcut to finding the organization that may be pulling the strings here. Oh! Didn't we read about that in one of the documents? You've read about it? In that case, the resentment should have come from that incident. Huh? What are you doing here? I was just about to look for you at the Palais Mermonia. Again. Is there something we can help with? I've heard some things, but I'm not purposely asking around or anything. Don't worry. Rumors are abroad that someone's scheming against Melusines, and that you're investigating the case. So I told the Spina di Rosula to keep an eye out for leads. We've had unfamiliar faces showing themselves at the Fleur Sandra lately. Maybe you'll find the suspects among them. Thank you. Where did you hear about all this? The Chief Justice out on investigation, accompanied by the Traveler from afar. No matter how you conceal your whereabouts, there will be countless eyes watching you. You talked to Kiara, but didn't ask her to keep things secret. People curious to know asked around for information, then it was only a matter of time before word of the threatening letter spread all across Fontaine. So that's what Charlotte meant. Indeed. I did not expect that this could be kept hidden for too long, but the rumors still spread faster than I imagined. Hmm. You know, it could be because... you attract more attention than you think. Anyway, any progress with the investigation? The suspects who threatened Kiara might have to do with a certain smuggling case, but it is still uncertain if there is in fact another party behind all this. We are planning to return to the Palais Mormonia to revisit some details and identify the senders of that threatening letter. All right, then I'll round up the Spina di Rosula and follow up on their progress. Wait for my word. Ta-ta! Uh, Nevelet, do you think there'll be any problems now that the word is out? I have already considered that possibility, and I do not think that there will be any. As a matter of fact, once the word gets out, no one would dare to harm Kiara in broad daylight. What is more important is how the case is perceived by the public. Four hundred years ago, they chose to side with the old regime and direct their resentment towards the Melusines. I hope the same won't happen again. Let us head back to the Palais. Hey. 
strange. What are these people doing out on the street so late at night? Did something happen? Let's take a look around. Have you heard? Someone's plotting against Amelazine. This is 100% the truth. Even the Chief Justice is investigating in person. What? That's it! Who's been threatening Melazines? Show yourself! Our enemies are lurking in the shadows and won't easily reveal themselves. But no amount of hiding will keep us from finding them. That's exactly what I wanted to say. The guards have already begun to take action. We can't just stand by and watch. Think about how much we owe them. Now that they're in danger, how can we just sit back and do nothing? Everyone, please stay alert to your surroundings from now on. If you see any suspicious persons, report them to the guards immediately. It feels like you've been following me this whole time. Did something happen? We were informed that. <clears throat> nope. We just finished our shifts and happened to be strolling by. Have you had dinner yet? Why don't we check out the new items at the dessert shop together? This isn't a good time to be out and about. Come on, don't act tough. I bet you're hungry too. <sighs> All right, let's go buy a cake or something. You shouldn't ever skip meals. Especially if you have another shift scheduled for later. I heard even Nervulet's keeping an eye on the situation. <laughs> this is the perfect chance to get promoted. We gotta make sure we give it all we've got. Seriously? Were you planning to shirk your duties if Nervulet wasn't involved? Relax, I was just playing. We've worked together for years now. If something happened to them, I'd be haunted by regret for the rest of my life. That's more like it. We should stand guard until the criminal has been caught. Come and fight me instead, you cowards! Have you heard? Even the special patrol came to help. Shh, look. Is it that nervulet? I think he's looking at us. Uh, looks like there's nothing to worry about. Hmm. This is truly wonderful. So, wanna go over and say hi? No, I should stay where I am. My appearance could give rise to unnecessary commotion. Let us stick to our plan and return to the Palais Mamonia. The faster we uncover the truth, the better. The smuggling case was solved by the joint forces of the guards and the Marechaussee Phantom. This is the one. The list of involved suspects should be... Ah, found it. What does it say? The principal offenders Domenico, Inica, Yuna, and others have been caught. They have been sent to the fortress of Meropede following trial. Those with close connections or mutual interests with the offenders, but who did not participate in the case, will not stand trial. Among them, surveillance of Essain has ceased on account of his good behavior. All other personnel remain on our watch list. So many names. Is the one who sent that threatening letter to Kiara on the list? Yes, there is something suspicious about Essain, to be precise. It seems like he's closely related to the core members of the smuggling case, and he moves around without much restriction. 
Monsieur Nivellet, someone claiming to be from the Spina de Rasula just checked in with us. He said, and I quote, <clears throat> We have located the suspect. They're chatting at the cafe. Huh? How did Nadia find them so quickly? We've only just figured out the suspect's name. I too am perplexed. The cafe isn't too far from here. We should head over and take a look. People who have had recent dealings at the Marachose Phantom. They're usually hidden in the Fleuve Zandra, but I sent for someone to invite them over. Invite them over? Exactly. Now, I heard there's great coffee here, and so I asked them if they'd like to come and have some. Yeah, it's our pleasure to be guests of the Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I've wanted to have a meetup like this for ages. Uh, something feels. Off. But, oh well, let's get back to business. Is there anyone called Essa here? Yes, uh, that's me. Your Essa? Yes, yes, Monsieur Nervilet. Did you write that threatening letter to Kiara? Um, uh. <clears throat> I, I did, but I, I was just following orders. Orders from whom? Dominico. He was my boss. I couldn't disobey his orders. Dominico? Where is he now? The Fortress of Meropede. Well, uh, I'm afraid even the Spina would have trouble looking into that place. Looks like you'll have to make the trip yourselves. This was as much as I could do. You've done more than enough. I am extremely grateful for your help. Leave the formalities for later. You should find Dominico first. If he really is the one setting up the conspiracy, it'd be best if he's exposed as soon as possible. All right then, let's head to the fortress right now! <laughs> Welcome to the Fortress of Meripede, dear esteemed guests. We're back! Oh, and a greeting from none other than the Duke himself! Guess we made a name for ourselves at this place. <laughs> this isn't anything new. I figured you had important matters to discuss when the two of you, not to mention the Chief Justice, showed up. Let's assume we've gone through the pleasantries and cut right to the chase. Hmm. I do remember a thing or two about Dominico. He once attempted to round up the other inmates and instigate a protest. Who does this guy think he is? Uh, Hyman hopes nothing came of it. He once attempted to, I said, meaning that it was over before it even started. And now he's threatening Melazines, is he? To be honest, Dominico doesn't seem like much of a conspirator. The fact that the three of you bothered to personally investigate raises a flag. Is there something else going on behind the scenes here? <sighs> He's got the same concerns we do. I am concerned about this incident because something similar has occurred in the past. I wish to meet Dominico in person and have my questions answered. That's an easy one. Let me think. I think he's at... Oh, did I hear someone say Melazine? What happened? Yeah, and we're investigating! 
reporting. The person who threatened her seems to be imprisoned here. Really? Is Kiara gonna be okay? There's no need to worry. Clorand is protecting her as we speak. <sighs> well, that's great. But if the criminal's still... Is there anything you can do about this? Ah, head nurse. Do you require me to personally deal with the criminal? Ridesley. Okay, I get it. I'll bring Dominico to you. That's your only demand, correct? Think of it as more of a humble request. I'm here on my own accord, not to formally transfer a criminal for trial. I urge you to set aside any concerns. Thanks for the trouble. Consider me in your debt. Whoa! If Paima were you, Your Grace, Paima would take this chance to ask for something really important. Well, were I still a criminal, I'd probably ask for a lighter sentence. But I'm sure Monsieur Nervillette would reject that. But enough jokes. I'll look for Domenico and bring him to you. Make yourselves at home. Our dear head nurse has mentioned you quite a few times, so I'm sure she has a lot to say. Now that I think about it, I can leave this place soon. Uh, huh? Please rest here for a moment. Oh, and would anyone like anything to drink? that you're dehydrated, which means you have to drink up even before that. I'll bring you some tea. I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about. Ah, typical Seedring. Concerned about everyone's health as always. Uh, why aren't you two saying anything? You noticed them too. The badges they wore on their chests looked quite familiar. Familiar? Uh, Paimon didn't even realize they were wearing them. But if both of you say so, let's go ask them about it. That's not a bad idea. I will stay here and wait for news from you. Anything you need? Oh, this? Are you interested in joining the Mutual Aid Network? What's that? We have a very long history, going back as far as 400 years ago. We have never had many members throughout our history, nor do we have much of a reputation, but everyone treats each other like family. Helping each other is our purpose. At the same time, we seek to maintain just dealings as much as possible. Pretty neat organization! <laughs> All we want is to defend ourselves. None of us have ever committed serious crimes, and we're not especially powerful either. We're at a natural disadvantage here in the fortress. But people won't give us a hard time if we stick together. Hmm. You two look kind of familiar. It's the symbol of the Mutual Aid Network designed by our first president. From what I've heard, it's based on something called a Medal of Peace. I've never seen one of those medals for myself, though. The first president of our network was an amazing person. Powerful as he was, he never used his strength against anyone. He encouraged the weaker criminals to stick together and look out for each other. All of us have a lot of respect for him.
Interested in joining the Mutual Aid Network? If you'd like to learn more, here's our flyer. Our slogan may have evolved over the centuries, but our goal has remained unchanged. Here, this book is for you. You're welcome to come and sign up anytime. You should have gathered enough information. Let's head back and talk to Nervalette. Did you manage to gather any intel? Mm-hmm. The people who wore the badges belong to an organization called the Mutual Aid Network. According to them, the badge's design was inspired by the Medal of Peace. Have you seen any of those before? I personally crafted two of them myself. They were awarded to Carol and Vautrin. Carol's medal was destroyed in a fire. The only one that remained should belong to Vautrin. Inspired by... Monsieur Nervillette, His Grace has requested your presence in his office. He's found Dominico. Hmm. All right. Let us talk to him first and get to the bottom of this situation. Allow me to introduce this fine gentleman, Dominico. Why don't you explain everything to him? N Nervilette? Wh what do you want? What are you gonna do, kill me? Calm down. I merely want to ask you a few questions. Was it your idea to send that letter to a Melusine? Uh, I... Hassan has already confessed, so there really isn't any need to keep hiding. Not that idiot! I can't believe I trusted him! Let me ask this another way. It was your idea to send that letter, correct? <sighs> yes. Who is pulling your strings? What? Y you're not trying to frame me for something I haven't done, are you? Hmm. <laughs> It's best if you realize the gravity of your situation. The Chief Justice of Fontaine has been personally investigating your case. I assume your previous attempt to incite unrest at the Fortress of Meripede has something to do with this as well. I... I admit I acted on impulse. I'll tell you the truth. But before that, you must ensure my safety. I can do that. You see, we're all reasonable people here. I only intended to do some small business at first. Someone contacted me about delivering some goods and promised me a generous sum of more in return. After making a few trips, I was suddenly approached by the Marichaussee Phantom. They accused me of smuggling prohibited items, and I was put on trial. But I refuse to accept any of that. The ignorant can be rightfully absolved from guilt, right? Well, I suspect that someone got me locked up here so they could get their hands on my goods. <sighs> And then you decided to take revenge on the Melazines? Over that? My initial target was Nervilette. Everyone in the forces of Meripede was declared guilty by him after all. So they must more or less hold a grudge against them, right? If I could get them to strike back. But for some reason, no one wanted to team up with me. That mutual aid network in particular. What did those nobodies even gain from trying to challenge me? Seriously. In the end, I had to redirect my focus onto Melazines to salvage things. 
I recall that Kiara was the one who confiscated my goods for inspection, so I asked one of the more approachable guards to send a letter, claiming that I meant to contact my family. But the letter was in fact addressed to Essa. I requested that he write a threat letter to Kiara and force it to resign from the Mari Chaussee Phantom. Am I to assume that the claims you've made are your own thoughts? Have you been in contact with any suspicious people recently? No. Is it true that all members involved in the smuggling scandal have been caught? Yes. And that's all I know. Hmm. Sijuin, please take him back to the detention center. I'll deal with him later. So, Monsieur Nivillette, you were concerned that there might be a shadowy faction looking to capitalize on the delicate situation with the Melazines to stir up greater chaos? Yes. I experienced a similar incident in the past, so I had to be prepared for any possibility. And how long ago was this incident? More than 400 years. You might be overthinking this. Time can change a lot of things. Everything's different now. What do you mean? 400 years ago, you and the Melazines you brought to Fontaine were the outliers in society. But in the present day, if someone were to threaten the safety of the Melazines, people wouldn't just sit back and do nothing. I trust that they would make different choices from before. That's right! We saw lots of people standing up for Melazines on our way back to the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nivillette, the Melazines are a species you introduced to Fontaine. How the public treats them is also reflective of their attitude towards you. When people refused to place their trust in Melazines, it was because they were still on the fence about you, their unfamiliar Chief Justice. For almost 500 years, you've conducted every trial with impartiality. You made the right judgment each time regardless of whatever nonsense went on. People no longer have any reservations about you and even consider you a symbol of the law. Right now, your every decision will impact all of Fontaine. In other words, you've gradually transformed the whole nation. Hyman gets it now! I wanted to join forces with Dominico. I am undeserving of such high compliments. From my perspective, I have simply been fulfilling my duties. It isn't anything special or worthy of praise. I'm simply fulfilling the promises I've made and searching for answers through my judgments. It is unnecessary to hold me in such high regard. The complexity of human emotions and willpower far exceed those of mine. As a matter of fact, I believe that you are the ones who deserve my respect. There's no need to be so modest. The current state of affairs says it all. You're no longer that outsider you were before. Even if you wished to investigate something on your own, many would take the initiative to lend you a hand. I must say that you've made a fair point. Thank you for clearing my doubts. Now that the case has been settled, I should get going. Huh? You're leaving? And so soon, too? Why not stay for a cup of tea? Thank you for the offer, but I know how this place works all too well. While some are here to redeem themselves, there will inevitably be those who harbor resentment towards me. The less time I spend here, the better. My presence could very well result in an unwanted disturbance. In that case, I'll have to insist. I still have two more things to say. Please, go ahead. The first is about the guard who helped Dominico send that letter. Ah, I know of what you speak. The guard was indeed deployed from the Palais Memoria's staff. However, as I mentioned earlier, I visited today on personal business. Therefore, I leave that matter in your hands. Well, that makes things a lot easier. Hey now, don't let your imagination run wild. Those from up there have a tendency to sympathize with others. However, down here, such thoughts will put you at high risk. I'll have a chat with the guard and remind him to take precautions in the future. I see no issues with that. Great! That's one thing out of the way! Uh, what's the other thing you wanted to say? 
The other thing was born from my own sense of curiosity. Now, I've heard that you investigated the mutual aid network. Is that right? Yep. Nevelet thought their badges looked familiar. I noticed the small gang as well when I first took over the Fortress of Meripeat. They were not great in number, but every member always made sure to stand up for what was right. I've looked into their founder, Vautrin, who once stood trial and was sentenced to imprisonment in the fortress. According to existing documentation, Vautrin remained disciplined throughout his imprisonment. He had never once engaged in physical or verbal aggression. In other words, how he presented himself in prison was very different from his behavior in court. What? During his trial, I could sense that his feelings were complicated. He appeared to be full of resentment, and I believe he had every right to feel that way. Perhaps he had been putting on an act. An act? Nervillette and Vautrin had a close relationship as superior and subordinate. Vautrin must have known that the Chief Justice would make an impartial judgment. Thus, the more resentment he displayed, the clearer it would be to those present that you were upholding justice. And to those who had been sitting on the fence, Vautrin's act was a very meaningful one. <sighs> That's all from me. Does anyone else have anything to say? Now's your chance. I don't have anything to say. Apart from expressing my gratitude, that is. Well then, let us head back. No need to see us off. Please, take care. That trial is something I rarely bring up in conversation, but... I have always felt deep regret for what happened to both Carol and Vautrin. The words he spoke in court often replay in my mind, as if urging me on to do something. But Risley said he never resented you, right? Isn't that a good thing? I believe I now understand what he wanted to tell me. I feel conflicted about those words. How should I describe it? Surprise, relief, fear, and regret. But this blend of emotions has led me to finally understand some things. I would like to hear your thoughts, too. What do you think of me? Paimon agrees with everything Risley said. As Chief Justice, every single one of your trials makes an impact on Fontaine. What do you think, Traveler? Uh, hey, any comments? What I really think is... Every trial you've ever judged has left its impression on you. And that's what makes you who you are today. Mm. That is indeed a reasonable assumption. As I said, I find it difficult to express my emotions because I cannot fully understand myself. But I trust your judgment. Since some time ago, I have begun to notice the changes that have occurred upon my person. These changes were not due to any specific occurrence, but emerged as a result of time itself. I will try to contemplate this further. Thank you both. raining again? I've had enough of this weather. Ugh, there go my travel plans. Did you read the news this morning? Quick, put away everything on the clothesline. <sighs> when is this rain going to stop? 
<laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry! They're planning to reanimate the monster. We have to report this to the Chief Justice. The Fortress of Meripede. It's a good place for me. He owes me so many answers. Nervilet? Hmm. You could say he's the real symbol of Fontaine's justice. Watch him closely. He could be trouble. How can two completely different species possibly coexist? Who's been threatening Melusines? Show yourself! You will see much in the human world. From the delightful to the depressing. And one day, when you have dwelt among humanity long enough, you will be placed to bring judgment over all as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. Good morning, Monsieur Nouvellet! The rainy season's almost over! <laughs> the skies are supposed to clear in a few days! I hope you find time to enjoy the sunny days ahead. Is the matter resolved? Yep. We found the person who sent that threatening letter. Risley said he'd keep a close eye on him, so the Melusine should be safe now. Oh, that's wonderful. Sorry for dragging you all into this. There's no need to apologize. Yeah, you didn't drag us in. We got involved of our own accord. Uh, by the way, where's Kiara? At the Palais Mermonia, more than 50 people offered to protect her. Some even hid within the bushes to look out for danger. I was worried that the excess of protection would make her feel uneasy. So I asked her to stay inside the Palais. It's very safe in there. <sighs> what a relief! Well now, it looks like the dust has finally settled. To celebrate this joyous occasion, Monsieur Nouvellette. Would you be interested in an exclusive interview? That's not how you celebrate! I will consider it. <gasps> really? Of course. My schedule is full for the following weeks, but I should be available next month. Come up with questions during the intervening days, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must head back to the Palais and issue a communique to publicize our investigation results. I hope it will assuage the concerns of all. Anything hold you back. Make the most of this opportunity and ask away. I agree. He'll decline any question he can't answer anyway, so you might as well give all of them a shot.
Kiara? Monsieur Neuvillette? Sorry, I accidentally fell asleep. It's quite all right. I'm here to tell you that we have caught the sender of that threatening letter. You're safe now. Thank you, Monsieur. And thank you too, Traveler and Big Sis Paimon. Everyone's been so nice to me, so I've always felt really safe. Do you remember Domenico? He was the sender of that letter. Let me think. Uh, I can't remember. My memory isn't that good, so I easily forget things. By the way, I saw Carol in my dreams just now. Hmm. Where's she gone, by the way? I haven't seen her in a long time. Uh... In my dream, she looked really happy. She held my hand and said, Kiara, our dreams have finally come true. I can't remember what our dreams were anymore, and I don't know why. But I felt really happy too. I can sense your joy. It is indeed a delightful moment. <laughs> Monsieur Neuvillette, are you happy too? Oh, I almost forgot! Am I allowed to go out now? I promised to model for Alof! Of course. Off you go. See you next time, Monsieur, Traveler, and Big Sis Paimon! Hmm. See you next time. I really can't fathom what goes on in her head sometimes.